<laughs> Engineer Joe, you say the caller is on the line. Is that correct? Hello. Oh yes. Hello. Hello. Comedy Death Ray. Who's hey, on? Scott. The, who's on the line? Hey Scott, it's me, uh, John C. Riley, the actor. John C. Riley, the actor. Yeah. Wait, from uh, movies like Chicago and uh, that's right, Academy Award nominee. Step Brothers. Yes, no, I was not nominated for Academy Award, but it's a funny movie. Uh, but what have you been doing recently? I, I can't even think. Have you been in a movie recently, or? <laughs> I, come on, are you, you're not. Are you kidding around? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm not kidding around. I mean, I have, I feel like I've you haven't been on the silver screen Man, since. I can't. I can't get your break. The I made it. You. I can't believe you're doing it too. The vampire's assistant. The, oh, the oh. vampire's assistant. Yes, freak that, circus. Wait, Cole did, and the vampire's assistant. Did that come out a couple weeks ago, or when was that out? Yeah, it did. It came out in in anticipation of All Hallows Eve. <laughs> it came out. Oh, that's uh, sh- that's the long way to say Halloween. Yeah, I was just, you know, I'm just trying to get fancy with it. <laughs> so uh, I- I'm sorry it came out, but it did not do well. It- no, and it's like <laughs> I don't I don't know what what the problem was because you figure you know people like Halloween and like uh, you know monsters and stuff and uh, you know there's like tons of monsters in here. There's so many. Like one of them needs uh, an assistant. Oh yeah, that vampire needs an assistant. Yeah, movie. he's like busy. Yeah. Do you, do you have any theories of why it didn't do well? Well, you know what? I, I wonder if people are too scared. You know, I, I wonder oh. if the title is like, oh man, I don't want to see that over. Overworked vampire. That's gonna. Wait, they were gonna be a bad mood because he's got so much on his plate. So they were scared not because it had a vampire in it, but because it seemed like uh, the vampire was too busy. Well, I think it's both. Is what I'm saying. I think like they're scared of a vampire, and they're like, "Well, in no way am I gonna see a busy vampire who's like grumpy all the time." <laughs> I went down that road with Ghost Dad. Oh my God, Dr. Bill Cosby! Hey, how you doing there, John C. Riley? You're a I'm, I'm fabulous very, I'm, actor. I'm very well, sir. Uh, I I got into acting because of your uh, because of your Cosby Show. Really? Yes. Really? It's That's fun. fantastic. Yeah. I never thought I would hear the day when Dr. Bill Cosby and John C. Riley had a phone conversation. Would you say I'm one of your biggest influences? Oh, dude, are you kidding me? There's <laughs> there's nobody else. You know what I mean? Like. I, I, I got that dumb Michael Caine acting DVD this of, time. Of it, course. He just, like, tells you what I did, eyeball to stare into, and I'm like, man, I need, I need like, uh, I wish Dr. Cosby would put out a, a acting DVD about how to, like, make faces and stuff. Well, I would if I wasn't dropping out of society, but I, I am. Are you but, going say, off the grid? I'm going off the grid. I'm going <laughs> underground. I don't blame you. Say, no, no, say yeah. John, speaking of acting, uh, are you getting more acting work? Uh, be- well, I was just saying, I'm, I'm like, I'm afraid, like, people, one of the reasons people stayed away is they thought I was a real vampire in the movie, and now I'm afraid all of Hollywood is going to think, oh, we can't have that guy around here drinking people's blood and stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, it's going it's it to hold up production at the very least. Well, um, hmm. but you are a really great actor, I mean. Thank you, uh, I know. Uh, oh, that's rude. You know, you say Dr. Cosby was one of your influences. Do you have yeah. any other influences? Oh, man, so many, so many people... Um, just throughout history, even like uh, I wish I had a time machine to go back and talk to like John Barrymore or uh, Carol Channing, Edmund Keane. Uh, Carol Channing's still alive, so I don't need. A Wait, time did Carol machine. Channing just walk <laughs> into the? <laughs> yes, like, this oh, is Carol oh, yeah, Channing. This is Carol Channing, hello. Carol, yeah, let, let me just say that I think that you are wonderful, Thank and you. you're very successful. And oh, okay, I can't do that anymore. Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> that was not Carol Channing, uh, oh. John C. Riley. Not not like you. You are a real celebrity, and Dr. I, Bill Cosby is a real celebrity. That hello. Was, that was Todd Glass doing a voice. I feel dumb that Todd tricked me by doing a Carol Channing voice, which is extremely accurate. Any other celebrities in history that are oh, kind of like, your acting? You know, Ed McKean, John Wilkes Booth. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What did you just say? John Wilkes, this John is John Wilkes, Wilkes Booth. Booth? Yeah, the, the actor John Wilkes Booth. The one who killed Lincoln. Oh. Look, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to judge the guy by his personal life because I, I just look at him as an artist. And I would love to get in a time machine, go back in time, and talk to John Wilkes Booth about the craft of acting. Is how you, do how do you even know he's a good actor? I mean, there there aren't any films of him acting, or just I guess it's just hearsay. It's just word of mouth. You like Wayne Cotter? What's that? Wayne Cotter? Have you ever heard of him? Oh yeah, he's, he got that funny bit about uh, putting uh, charcoal briquettes in a pile. <laughs> Never would solve a pile, Dad. That's how that goes. Well, John, thank you so much for calling in. Uh, what's next for John C. Riley? Oh, um, I got some uh, 
crate and barrel furniture I got put together? Oh. oh. I think Ooh. he meant on the business end. <laughs> What's that? I think he meant on the business end, like movies. And not on the business end like you're on the business end of a pistol or anything, meaning, uh, you know, yeah, movies, what next? Bad movie? end. Oh, um... I think that's it for me. I think I might be done. Hey, like, do you want to come live with me in my Jello shelter? Oh, my. Dr. Cosby, I consider that the highest honor. Is it made of Jello? It is not made of Jello. It's made of the stainless steel. It's stocked, it's stocked with Jello. Oh, I thought maybe it was either made of Jello or it was designed to shelter Jello. Regardless, <laughs> let's live together. Ooh. We can, we can, we can work on the Bill Cosby time machine oh. so that you can go back in time, see all your acting heroes. And I can go to another age is where... Is the Bill Cosby time machine, is that shaped like your face as well? <laughs> it is shaped like my face. It is a big version of my face. Oh, oh okay. It'll be easy to find, then. Dr. Cosby, can I ask you one question before I hang up the phone and um, call again? Okay. <laughs> Listen, um, this may, uh, you probably get this question all the time. I I'm, got so many questions. I'm sorry if this question is not awesome and it's dumb. No, you're weird. Okay, but weird. Listen, if I, if I were to take your hand, would we fly? If you were to take my what? My if what? I were to take your hand, will we fly through the sky together? Will we fly through the sky together? Now let me, if you took my hand, would we fly through the sky? That is a great question. You have magical powers of flight, Dr. Cosby. This is a good question, and the answer is yes. I knew it! Yes. Take my hand. <laughs> I knew it! We will fly. John, get down to the, get down here to the studio. Oh, you man, can take I'm, on my, I'm on my way. Hang up, hang up. Get down I'm here as soon up. as you can. Awesome. Okay. We're going to have to end the show, but hopefully John uh, C. Riley will get here uh, at some point. We're going to live so, together. So that the two of you can grab hands. Wait a minute. Someone's coming oh into the studio. Uh, wait. Oh, my God. Hello. Oh. John C. Riley. Oh. I'm at home. Uh, wow, you I'm got out here, of breath. You got here really quick. Yeah, I live upstairs. Oh. <laughs> you live yeah. Up- yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got, a, I got an apartment here. You know, just like I like to be in this, uh, in this area of town. Because um, it's got a Chipotle that I really like. And you live upstairs at Indy 103.2. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just one floor above, two floors above Indy 103. You look, you look great. Thank you. you thank look you. Great. I mean, my hair is a fright. Okay. I did not have time to, uh, to tease it out properly. You, you guys, we're going to end the show. Here we go. We're gonna, you guys are going to grab hands, okay. and then you're going to fly away. This is exciting. Right? Okay. This is, I'm a little nervous. Let's All do right. it. I hope we don't make a big uh, uh, Bill Cosby, uh, John C. Riley hole in the roof. Uh, oh. But we might. That would be fine. <laughs> and that All would, right. That would be an Indy 1032's uh, floor. Here we go. So long, Earth. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. We're we ah! going And uh, this is our last show of the year, so we're having uh, a lot of uh, favorite people just drop by at any time, and uh, they can just come in whenever they want. So it's been a lot of fun. Not not to say that they would come in while I'm talking or anything. Oh, hey. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> hey, Scott. Wait a minute. Yeah. Is this who I think it is? It's me. This is I exactly who I think wow. it is. The Great Riles. <laughs> John C. Riley. That's How right. are you? <clears throat> I'm good, man. Uh, Merry Christmas. Hey, thank you so much for dropping by. You've been on the show once before. I was on once before, and I thought like, uh, that I should come by again because um, I had a good, I had a great time doing it, and uh, you know, I like the whole vibe here. I, I'm a big uh, fan of comedy. I love, uh, I love all your guests. I, I think El Chupacabra is awesome. I love <laughs> Jesse Bot Um uh, I, I would have voted for him had I lived in Minnesota. I spent a lot of time with the Guthrie there, obviously doing acting, and uh, um, obviously. <laughs> Doug, Doug Benson, I, I love uh, I love you and uh, and comedy and marijuana. So it's like, <laughs> um, it's like you guys are like the three musketeers. You comedy and concerned. marijuana. Yeah, <laughs> who's D'Artagnan yeah, Doug, Doug, in that scenario? That's the fourth. Hold on a second. It's Doug, Doug, and marijuana and comedy are the three musketeers. Yeah. Right? So who then would be D'Ar- D'Artagnan the me, young? Me, I am. Oh, wow. yeah. It's me. You're the young, inexperienced, naive musketeer who comes and joins forces and then becomes one of the greatest musketeers of all. In that scenario, yes. That's what I'm. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. And uh, oh, oh. And we now we have not met. I don't think. Uh, no. Nice uh, to meet you. I'm John. Hi. Yes. Me too. Uh, uh, John C. Riley. I'm a big fan. Of, <laughs> big fan of your work. Oh, that's uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, congratulations is, to you on all your uh, uh, all your success and all the attention that you're thanks, getting thanks, for, thanks uh, for a lot, what you yeah. do. Now, John, oh, you, oh, hold on a second, Scott. I want to talk to uh, the actor here. Okay, just sorry. a couple of actors talking. Congratulations on your Golden Globe nomination. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot. Thank thanks. You. It's always fun, man. Like every time I got nominated for a Golden Globe, I was like, "This is awesome." You know, it's fun. It's nice. It's it is it's it is a, it's a nice honor. And, yeah. And now, when you won yours, did, was it? Did you enjoy like? Uh, 
Did you? I haven't. Uh, you didn't win one. No, that's funny. That's funny that you say that because I feel like you probably, you know, if you're I just assume. Yeah, no, no, no. I just assume. Oh no, no, so... no, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I don't win. I don't win everything I'm nominated for. Like when I was nominated for the Oscar. <laughs> I didn't win that. Did you? Were you nominated for an Oscar? No, I, I was not. No, I was not. My, that's I worked right. in mostly in television. No, that's right. Mostly television. That's right. <laughs> mostly yeah. television doesn't get nominated for the Oscars. No, either. no. You know what? I, I, unless they change the rules, I don't think they change the rules. I think like like TV shows don't get nominated for Oscars. No, I think they you don't. have no, to make. Don't. Yeah, you have to be in like an Oscar-winning movie like Chicago, where you are a double threat, where you're singing triple. We are singing, singing dancing, dancing, and acting. And acting. Yeah. Who is D'Artagnan in that scenario, by the way? Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> three, three, three musketeers of those ideas are Sammy singing, Sosa. dancing, and acting. Plus, <laughs> <laughs> Sammy Sosa says Chupacabra. Chupacabra's probably right. It's probably Sammy Sosa. <laughs> it's singing, dancing, acting, and Sammy and, Sosa. And hitting home runs. Yeah, and hitting home runs. <laughs> And hitting home runs. Yeah, good. Why, God, yeah. why isn't the studio taking out more ads to uh, try to get you a nomination for Souk Du Freak, the vampire's the assistant? Vampire. Yeah. yeah. What, Scott and I talked about this before. Oh, it's had length. I think people don't... I don't <laughs> oh, sorry to put you out. <laughs> I don't think... <laughs> I, don't, I don't think people realized that... Um, I was not actually a vampire. I think that because my acting was so good, I think people were scared. Oh, so That's probably true. Yeah, I think so too scared yeah, to go yeah, to You don't want to nominate a vampire. You don't want to invite them in. Are you being a You being a I just had a follow up because I, I really enjoyed your work in oh, Chicago. You got a follow up? Okay, I have time for two more. <laughs> all right. And, so uh, first, you, then Helen Thomas. <laughs> Thank you, first of all, for putting me in front of Helen. Sure. I, I respect her work yeah, greatly. Yeah. She's just going to ask me about the war. <laughs> you don't want that. Um, since since it, it was so uh, well-received, Chicago with Rob Marshall, and he's, yeah. done, he's done this next movie, Nine, that I That's know right. you had a part in as well, Yeah. because um, he asked you back, and, and do, do you enjoy working like when people keep asking you back because they're Wait such a, a minute, fan? Now, John, I saw Nine, and <clears throat> I don't remember John C. Riley being in this movie. Again, I just assumed that you were... Because uh, you worked so well Kate together. Hudson. No, no, no. I don't. I don't get asked. I don't get asked back. I thought, I thought your your, sta- your every... new stage name was Fergie. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, uh, clearly, I'm, that's a lady, and uh, I'm. So, maybe you think that because your hair is so boring. <laughs> and your hey, hair. You know what? My hair, hair is exciting. It's exciting. <laughs> like my hair is like a roller coaster ride of hair. Listen, you know what, John? I, I'm. I'm smoked too, man. I've smoked. I've smoked on screen too. It's not. It's not like a, a special skill. All right. You might have that on your resume under stage combat and accents of all kinds, <laughs> but it's not a, like I get it. You can smoke on screen and uh, you got stuff in your hair. Whatever. That's my triple threat: acting, oh. smoking, uh, uh, and stuff in my hair. Let me ask you a Scott Ackerman style uh, gotcha question: <laughs> Who's the D'Artagnan in that triple threat? <laughs> I <Booze>. am, <laughs> I'm very fond of gotcha style comedy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I I tell you what, Scott. I like that you hold my feet to the fire on some of these <laughs> issues. <laughs> I'm surprised you know. Scott hasn't asked you what magazines you read yet, because that's a hard ball. I wish. Oh, yeah. I wish he would ask me how much money I make. So uh, I'd be happy oh, to tell. He'd be happy to tell us. I'm kind of retiring that question. <laughs> what? 2009. Just one more time. All it's right. How much money do you make? A million. A million what? A million. A million dollars. <laughs> what? A million what? <laughs> dollars. A month. I thought, what? <laughs> yes. Wow. That's yeah. 12 million a that year. Is. Oh, that's, is it? Oh, I'm not good with figures. But uh, yeah, I guess so if, if, they're tw- if they're 12 months in the year. Well, how, Unless how it's a leap year. How many euros is that? Unless it's a leap year. Good catch, uh, uh, Mr. Euros. Gregorian. I love your calendar. <laughs> Chupacabra has something to say here. <laughs> What's that, Chupacabra? It's 8 million euros. <laughs> so it's a one to one euro to dollar ratio now? Yeah, I got one of those cards on my wallet that does the conversion, but thank you, Chupacabra. <laughs> Do you travel a that. lot, John C. Riley? Oh, man. I'm traveling all over the place because people love, people ha- often have need of my acting services. I've been in. Uh, 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 every country in the world, I think. How many are we up to worldwide? Like a hundred? Uh, there's a few more than that. I mean, I'd there's prob- probably a hundred. Let's say about a hundred. About a okay. hundred. Yeah. Okay. I feel like you're being sarcastic with me, but I can't. I can't say for sure because because uh, no one know, really like, knows how many countries there are in the world. They keep yeah, changing. Every, like, yeah. Every year, what is Uruguay? How you know? many? How many snowflakes are in that snowman? Yeah, what's you know going what on I mean? with Constantinople? Yeah. Wow. Are you asking questions when you're traveling? <laughs> are you asking questions? <laughs> I do ask questions like. Uh, Hey, um, can I keep these slippers? That's what I ask like at hotels. What, what is usually the answer? Do you answer? charge my room? Oh, they say they charge your room. <laughs> 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 but I keep asking because one of these days, I know they're going to be like, John C. Riley, you're awesome. Keep those slippers, man. 
I would love to see an acting off. You know, between the two Johns, I would love to see who's the more powerful. Give us a monologue, actor. Give us a monologue right now. Give us a monologue. You okay. Because right let me now in the main ring. Because let me. want to see an acting off. Will you be? A, <laughs> will you referee the acting off, uh, Governor? Uh, that was my audition. I was asking. That's Engin- how I asked. Engineer oh. Joe, let's get a Shakespearean monologue up. Let's let's do to be or not to be. Let's let's get that up on the computer, and then we're we're gonna see exactly who is the better actor. Uh, Why don't we just do something from Gangs of New York, the movie I, I acted in? <laughs> well, see, that's uh, directed that gives, by Martin Scorsese. That gives you a little bit of an unfair advantage because uh, John uh, Hamm here has never been in a Martin Scorsese movie. Nor Look, if that's, it's, uh, that's okay. If really, I don't think that's a problem. Really. No. You think Honestly. you'd do better if you? Okay, well maybe we should get Gangs of New York. Get that fa- get my famous monologue from Gangs of New York. <laughs> did, how did that go? I'll go Something like, "Hey, I'll, gangs." I'll go ahead oh, and do. It. <laughs> <laughs> Some someday you'll be the gang when, you, when yeah. you're introduced to cool. Hey, g- <laughs> but for now, you're my gang. But for now, it comes Fatty with a sack of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Call <it> back everything. <laughs> All right, I do think Engineer Joe has a uh, monologue from uh, As You Like It, the famous uh, What's Shakespearean that? What's that? Pl- Really, you don't know Shakespeare? That's surprising to me, honestly. I know, I know Shakespeare is. You don't know that he wrote a play called As You Like It, one of his comedies. He yeah, wrote? One, of, one of the conspiracies I've uncovered was that it wasn't William Shakespeare. Really? Who, who was it? I've got to the bottom of that burning issue. Who was it? It then? was the Earl of Oxford. Huh. Which Edward Shakespeare, Devere. Which Shakespeare play did... Uh, Baz Luhrmann, right? He, he wrote, wrote Ro- Romeo plus Juliet. Yeah, that was it. Did you ever see that? It was very. Uh, it was powerful. All right, so we have this monologue up now. Who who goes first? Do we need to flip a coin? Oh, the he screen, can go first. The went oh, okay. I'm cool John, with that. Went, oh, John, there it is, there John Ham goes first. This is a monologue from As You Like It, and let's hear the powerful acting of John Ham, uh, actor extraordinaire from St. Louis, taught acting to uh, young children. In St. Louis, and then uh, this became, is going to this is going to lose a little bit on the radio because what you're not seeing right. is my uh, my powerful brooding. Your physicality is important that's, to a character. That's starting right now. However, I've closed my eyes when I watch Mad Men usually because I'm doing laundry, and I do that with my that's eyes hard closed. Hard to do. <laughs> you're folding, must be. What character are you going to be reading for us? This Adam. Is Adam. All right, and he comes riding in on a sleigh. <laughs> Thank you, Sleigh Master. And begin. What, my young master? Oh, my gentle master. Oh, my sweet master. Oh, you memory of old Sir Roland. Why, what make you here? Why, are you virtuous? Why do people love you? And wherefore are you gentle, strong, and valiant? Why would you be so fond to overcome the bonny prizer of the humorous duke? Your praise has come too swiftly home before you. No, you're not, master. To some kind of men, their graces serve them but as enemies. No more to yours. Your virtues, gentle master, are sanctified and holy traitors to you. Oh, what a world is this, when what is comely envenoms him that bears it. I think we have a winner. I think he won. Yes, what? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Yeah. 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 Wins. Hold on a second. That was, that was definitely yeah. Yeah. Hold that on. Was really you that shut was up. Everybody shut the fuck up. <laughs> that was the best Don't one. Tell Hold me on. Shut you up. shut the fuck John up. John C. Riley, you're not my commanding officer. Listen. John. John. Yeah. The, the stage is yours. Thank you. Let me. Right. He rides in on the sleigh. <laughs> I'll take off my sweats. And of course I'm wearing a leotard. <laughs> Go. What, my young master? Start whenever you're ready. Oh, my. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> you gotta. Res- you better respect the, cr- the craft, Doug. You gotta respect the craft. This is, uh, this is not done. This is not done what you're doing. Would it help respect- if we had Will Ferrell and Adam McKay in here holding your hands? <laughs> oh! Boy. Oh, oh, man. Boy. Oh. Maybe, uh, if, uh. Matthew Weiner. Matthew Weiner. What? That's the guy that <laughs> just say wiener. Holds his <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> what, my young master? Oh, my gentle master! Oh, my awesome master! Oh, you memory of old Sir Roland. Why? What make you here? Why virtuous? Why do people love you? And wherefore are you gentle, strong, and awesome? Why would you be so fond? To overcome an awesome prizer of the awesome duke. Your praise has come to swiftly home before you. No, you're not, master. <laughs> to some kind of men. The grace of serve them but as enemies. No more to yours. Your virtues, gentle master. 
awesome and holy traitors to you. <laughs> oh, what a world is this? When what is awesome and venom sim? The, the bears that... I'm, look, I'm crying real tears. Oh, Look at how I'm crying real tears. Oh my gosh, get a close up on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't use a, uh, uh, one of those uh, menthol things. And I don't, yeah, thank get, you, let's Super get a, Cobra. Let's get a microphone right by those tears. Yeah, yeah. Can, can you hear them dripping <laughs> into a pan, wow. a basin? <laughs> that was a giant tear. Yeah, I have a tear basin that I carry around. <laughs> <laughs> a tear spittoon? A tear <laughs> ewer? Uh, Are you, is so, that wait? Is there that was it? That's so the end. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Anytime I cry real tears, that's the end of the <laughs> monologue. <laughs> really, you just stop in the middle of a sentence. Everybody vote for either right, John every- C. Riley or the winner. Okay, here we go. Ready? <laughs> let's let's go around. Let's uh, let's take it around from Doug Benson. Who do all you right. vote for? I think we should do this by silent uh, <laughs> auction. So? Should we all put our heads down and then uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah, turn bid. out the lights? Engineer Joe, turn out the lights. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're turning out the lights. Everyone put their heads down on the uh, d- on your desks like oh. it's heads up seven up. Whoever votes for me. And uh, yes. If you vote if you vote for me. John, are you saying John, something? I can hear I'm you. Just, what? I can hear you. Everybody to everybody named John Ham, take your headphones off. <laughs> Listen. Oh, okay. They're off. If everybody votes for me. Wait, I took mine off. Am no, I you're not your name is not John. Oh, okay. Wait, right. how did you hear me? <laughs> Back on. If you if you vote for me, it's a vote for uh, nice guys. All right? So just keep that in mind when you when you're voting. And also remember, I have a sticker for everybody that votes that says I voted for John C. Wiley. <laughs> okay, let's keep that in mind as we vote. Everybody the lights like, the lights have been out for the right. last sixty seconds. No, well, it's scary. Isn't I it? know. Right, this is Can I put my headphones back on now? Yeah, sure. Wait. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay, John has his headphones back. We're, we're all able to hear each other, but we can't see each other. That's right. But so I have, it could be anybody. Yeah, I have my night uh, vision goggles on, though, so I can, I have mine. I can record. The, no, wait, you should not be wearing yours, what? because then that way the vote would not be They're secret. just resting on my forehead, cool style. Oh, okay. Like you look, mystery yeah, you look like from mystery. the pickup artist. <laughs> I was going to say that. Uh, I'm peacocking with my hair. <laughs> so, a lot of people think it's a hat, a furry mystery hat. Nope. It's my hair. It's just my hair. <laughs> it's very exciting. Thank it's you. like a roller coaster. Roller coaster. <laughs> okay. Now, everyone, you have your heads down, and it's and it's dark. Everyone who would like to vote for John C. How are you going to see our votes? I have it's my dark. night vision goggles yes, on. Oh, I, it's already I established, wasn't paying attention stoner. Doug, come on. <laughs> Sorry, John. You're very disruptive with this whole process. You're like, uh, like this is like doing elections in Iran. All right. Tropical. <laughs> Topical. <laughs> Doug, Doug loves movies. <laughs> Why are we criticizing the er- elections in Iran when we can't even have fair elections in this country? All right. So now we'll <laughs> – everyone who voted for John C. Riley, raise your hands. I voted for John C. Riley. No. Let, no, no well, no, thank you, but fun. still. I, I vote for John C. Riley. Wh- what? Who, who said that? Who is that? Is that a ghost? <laughs> turn the lights on. <laughs> wait, wait. Okay, John turn the lights on. Okay. John Hamm, your, your hand so is up. Are you saying you voted for me for the acting contest? I, I, I did. I voted for you. I thought you brought a lot to that and uh, made it made it your own. But I've treated you so poorly. <laughs> it's okay, man. You know what? You're being the bigger guy here, and I feel like a real jerk. What? Are you crying real tears, John Hamm? <laughs> I am. And I, so is it okay if I use your 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 tear basin? Of course it is. We we're both actors. We gotta stick together. So what if you just work exclusively in television, pretty much, and I'm on the silver screen on the Broadway stage opposite people like Philip Seymour Hoffman doing a version of True West where we switch roles every night? That's that, a that, lot of track delay. A- <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I wow. voted for Juan Hamon. <laughs> So, so, do we have a winner? Have you guys? You know what? I almost uh, like. You know who the winner I, is? I think the winner. Shut up, Scott. Whoa. Do you know who the you who, know who the winner who's, who's is? The winner. The Friend? audience. Aww. True. They got to hear some great acting. True. True. By wow. the bar. You know what the second winner is? Who? Friendship. You know who the third I almost want to make that the first winner. <laughs> you know who's the third winner? Christmas. <laughs> and who's yeah. the fourth musketeer? Who's the, who's the of D'Artagnan winners? of winners? <laughs> now I would like <laughs> I'd like John Hamm to sing the uh, invisible 
song about being invisible from Chicago. Go. Okay, here we go. Mr. Cellophane, a song by John Hamm. <laughs> it's about being see-through, not invisible. Just, you know, just make, sorry. Well, uh, let's... Did you have to be see-through on the set every day? That was, uh, that was... That was... That was... He's doing it! He's doing it! He actually is doing it! You, what a wonderful <laughs> voice you have! Throw me it's like a, a young Carol right Channing. It's come to life. Me. Someone he's get Rob the, Marshall on the He's even doing the finger choreography. <laughs> I All right, because I wanted to see if frogs would fall out of the sky. <laughs> is that going to happen? No. That's a thing that happens. Uh, we're coming up towards the end of the show. This is Comedy Death Ray. I want to get plugs from everyone. And also, as far as plugs, I'm getting hair plugs <laughs> next <laughs> week. That's uh, very coincidental. Yes. To maintain my masculinity. As my <laughs> John C. Riley. Thank you, John Hammond. Well, I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm, a, I'm gonna be at the uh, 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 the uh, the Malibu Playhouse um, on Christmas Day. I'm <laughs> really? doing a special um, uh, one man version of Frost Nixon, where <laughs> I play both parts. One half of my face is painted like Frost. <laughs> then I I turn profile. The other half is Nixon. It's like uh, it's like that famous Star Trek episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the one, the one with uh, Frank Gorshin, <laughs> yeah. and. Um, also, there's this show, uh, the Paul F. Tompkins Christmas show is oh, uh, that's tomorrow a good show. night at Largo. That's at Saturday the night, the Yeah, uh, yeah the I'm 19th. telling them, Saturday the 19th. Well, a lot and, uh, of people are listening to this on a different day. I yeah, well, it's too late then, you <laughs> fucking idiots. If they're listening, though, in the morning of the 19th, they All can right, still get it Scott, together. you made your point. You're smart. <laughs> Gosh, I wish we were friends like so you and John Hammer. Oh, stop be. crying. Stop we crying. We will. I'm crying. I'm crying. <laughs> and uh, it's a charity show for Habitat for Humanity. There's still just a couple seats left, but uh, it's trying to make it a sold-out show. So uh, there you go. Well, ba- that's ben fantastic. Lee, the musical guest. Stan and, uh, Lee, the musical guest. Tom Lennon from Reno 911. John Lennon and Stan Lee will be there. I want to know the truth. You're messing it up. You're messing it up on purpose. (laughs) Willfully messing it up. What is the truth between Reno 911? I want to get those answers. (laughs) Man, that's uh, crazy. That's almost all of the show. This is a very special show. Two hours we have today. This is Comedy Death Ray. I'm Scott Ackerman. It is our one year anniversary show. One year we've been doing the show, having a lot of fun. Uh, All the proceeds from today. (laughs) Where does the money go? I don't know. Where does the money go? That's a ph- Let's take philosophical a call. question. <laughs> take a call. No one calls into the show anymore. Oh. What do you mean? I don't. How, I thought we were like on a radio show. We're on a sh- yeah. Let's we're on a radio show, but just because we, you know we have phones here doesn't mean that anyone would ever. Oh, wait a minute. Someone is calling in. Okay. Uh, let's yeah. Let's pick that up. Engineer Stu, is there someone on the someone on the line here? Uh, yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, yes, hello. Oh, that was perfect. Uh, um, hello, yes, Indy 1031. This yes, is Comedy hello. Def- this is the police department. <laughs> the police department? That's right, sir. We've got a noise complaint from one of your neighbors. A noise complaint from what? Okay, well, what neighbor? Is it upstairs or downstairs? Both. <laughs> upstairs, downstairs, and the, mini- the BBC miniseries <laughs> is also complaining. <laughs> uh, uh, we're not making a lot of Please, noise. We're- shut up, sir. <laughs> we have a noise complaint. Everybody, simply everybody is calling, saying there is a loud anniversary party going on. Uh, Scott, I'm messing around. It's me, John C. Riley. John C. Riley, old friend of the show. How are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm sorry to make you sweat and shake with fear. Oh, over I was quaking. A, a fake noise complaint. It's I was. I've played a police officer, most notably in the uh, Oscar-nominated film Magnolia. Hmm. Weren't you one in Chicago? Yeah, no, you're applaud. an auto mechanic. Oh, I'm let sorry. Okay, I think I think they're done. All right. So, well, probably not, but they're probably it's dying out enough that they can hear what we're saying. <laughs> uh, so, so you use that uh, background in or, uh, of of all the research you did when you played those uh, parts to infuse. I don't even know what I'm saying. I don't either. But listen, <laughs> that was just a roof, dude. I'm calling to say happy anniversary. It's awesome that this show has been going on for as long as it has. Nobody believed that it would or should, but now look. <laughs> You're, you're, you're hanging around with uh, Pig and uh, others? Taylor Dane. What's that? I said Taylor Dane. Yeah, okay. I think we we all know that you met Taylor Dane a bunch of times. <laughs> hey, John, where, uh, you're an old friend of the show. You've been on, uh, most famously, you had an acting off with John Hamm on, on our... Right. Uh, on and our, I won. Yeah, you did win. Um, where are you calling from now? Oh, I'm calling from a party. 
Um, we're having uh, me and some other people are having an anniversary party to celebrate your anniversary. <laughs> really? That is but so. We didn't, want, we didn't want to go to the radio station because it would have been depressing. <laughs> that is so kind of you and accurate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're calling from a hot air balloon. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. How many people fit into that hot air balloon basket? Oh, my God. Let me take a quick head count. <laughs> what? It's like, it's like a half dozen of us. Oh, sounds we're, like six. We're just flat. Yeah, that's right. I forgot there's an easier way to say half a dozen. <laughs> you just use the numerical value. <laughs> and you're like, you're saving time to do other stuff. Oh, John! It's it's. Uh, thank you so much for having a party for me. What what well, else? Look, what stop, state are you in? Shut up, shut up again. Shut shut, up again. Oh, sorry. Sounds like a bad state. Everybody shut up. Take shut up. Uh, thank you for having this great show and for having me and some other people over the year. I've <laughs> 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 been a part of it. Oh man! All the year that you've been doing the show, <laughs> there's been so many people. Oh wait, hold, what's that? Oh, hold on. somebody else wants to say hi. Hold on a second. Oh, okay. Let who's let who's there with the, you? Let me pass the balloon phone over to the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a fancy balloon. Yeah, it's the air to, air to shore b- balloon phone. <laughs> hold on a second. Okay. Oh, hold on, dude. I'll hold. I'll hold. Bal- sure. Hold the balloon phone. Obviously, he must be here with just some regular people. So Hello. We- Who am I talking to? Uh, this is Scott Ackerman. Who is this? Scott, it's me, your old friend Ice T. Happy what? anniversary, man! You're on the you're on the balloon with John of C. Riley. You know, Ice? How, you know, I love air travel. You know, I love non-standard air travel. No, that is well established. Well, if, either I'm in the MetLife blimp <laughs> with peanuts characters, or I'm in uh, a hot air balloon with uh, this character, John C. Riley, <laughs> among other people. This is so exciting. Oh my gosh, what an amazing! Hey, hey, is that Tig? That is Tig. Hey, how do you, you know doing, me? <laughs> did you see my premium blend nine years ago? You know I did. Oh ask me Ask me if I recorded it on VCR oh. and then l- subsequently put that onto a DVD once my tape started wearing out. Okay, did you record my premium blend on a tape and then subsequently record it on a DVD? DVD? I, I got to say no. Um, <laughs> I... I was kind of gambling that you would not ask, actually ask me <laughs> Ooh, I'm that is a gamble you I'm lost. A, I'm embarrassed. But I, I, I tell you what, it's one of those things, like, if I see your premium blend come on, I will watch it from whatever point that it starts until the end. It's like Jaws, you know. If that movie uh-huh. comes on, I will just watch it to its completion. The Godfather, same thing. Uh, Ice, where, what, where are you guys? I can't figure it out. You're in a uh, hot air balloon somewhere in, in another state, or you're, you're definitely not here, in, or else you guys would have come into the studio. No, we're, uh, we're over the earth for sure. But, okay, um, good. That's I, a good I starting we, point. I think we got lost. <laughs> really? Where'd you oh, start yeah. from? I think that uh, I think somebody fucked up. We started out in Los Angeles, you know, where uh-huh. we all live. Sure. And then... Um, now everything just looks like squares. You know what I mean? Like when you up in an airplane you mean like, and you're looking down and it's just like the flyover states. You mean like people who are 50 years old and Republican and conservative? Or? Oh, I wish, I wish we could see people that squares. closely that that's what I meant. <laughs> but uh, no, it's just like uh, the amazing patchwork quilt that is the U.S. of America. Oh, right. Wow. Do you think you in a balloon is going to cause like a balloon boy story on... On all the news channels? Yeah. That would be, I mean, you have John C. I ain't Riley. I'm no a balloon boy. I'm a balloon man. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. A little respect. Seriously. Oh, speaking of respect, what's up with your friend Amy Mann dissing me on Twitter? <laughs> yeah, what is going uh, on with that? <laughs> I don't. She can, she can eat a hot bowl of dicks. <laughs> I will Here's be. what I want her to do. Okay. I want her to prepare a bowl of dicks from scratch. <laughs> okay. Right? <laughs> Using like That's an the best way to do recipe. it. Sure. Yeah. Then uh, you can taste the difference that way. She can season to taste, but then <laughs> I want her to preheat the oven for like uh, uh, 450 degrees for about 10 minutes. Don't you think that's a little too hot? I mean, you don't want maybe you want to crisp. God, I'm not finished with the recipe. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, after the oven's nice and hot, I want her to go listen to my album with Body Count. <laughs> <laughs> which contains the hit single and controversial song, Cop Killer. You must mean the album Body Count. Yes, I do. The eponymous album. I, I don't want to say that because I feel that word sounds pretentious. <laughs> I and have no I'm problem sure with it. I'm using it correctly. Sometimes I say homonymous, which <laughs> I think means that it sounds like itself. <laughs> 
So, all right. So breathe them to 450. Okay, got Listen it. Listen to that whole album. Mm-hmm. Turn the oven off. <laughs> Let it cool down. <laughs> Let the oven cool down. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Stick, now, that hot, stick that bowl of dicks in the microwave. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Set it for popcorn. Okay. That will be enough time. <laughs> Take <laughs> it out. It'll be just right. Eat a hot bowl of dicks. I will be sure to pass that on to Amy. She's a friend of the show, been on a couple of times. On the phone. Hold on a Wait, who is Stop. this? Somebody somebody wants wants the phone. Let me talk, I say. Oh, what is going uh, on right, in this dude. balloon? Keep uh, cool your jets. <laughs> all right. Is Let this the write, the writer of West Side Story? Cool what? your jets? Stephen Sondheim? No, it's not. Oh, sorry. Oh, so because he wrote West Side Story, he he, he says cool around your jets all the time with a bunch of people who's in this gang that he made up. <laughs> <laughs> no, who is it? Please pass the phone over. I, I'm breathless with anticipation. I think you, I think you'll know who it is. Hold on one second. <laughs> yes, yeah, finally. I say you keep me waiting forever. Uh, oh, oh my God! Is this, hello, hello. Could it possibly be who I think it is? I think you know who it is, Devon. Is this Sir Dame Andrew Lloyd Webber? Oh, happy anniversary to you. Thank you so much for calling in from the balloon phone. That... Oh, and also to Engineer Stewart. Oh, Engineer Stewart gets a nice shout out from he, Dame he Sir. Gets a nice shout out. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, why are you in the balloon with these people? Are you working on some sort of. I love so- to party! <laughs> I love to have fun off of the earth. <laughs> I love. I, I just love floating. I love floating. I love to float. We have a long tradition of floating in the UK. Can you tell us a little more about that long tradition? Well, you know, Sir Richard Branson, my fellow knight of the British Empire. He he floated? Oh, he's a big balloonman, don't you know? Yes. He's got his own balloon. He's got a suit of balloons. I don't know. He's got a balloon force. But, uh, he's, uh, to- I think he's going to attack. <laughs> It's <laughs> not a fleet of, of war balloons. <laughs> and, and is that why you, you went up in the balloon, is in order to stave off his attack, or...? Well, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm, afraid, uh, I'm afraid he's going to try to reclaim the Falklands <laughs> by balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell Ice-T and John C. Riley that this is the purpose of your mission? Oh, or? no, I daren't. I daren't tell them, Scott. <laughs> Those two boys, they're so sweet and lovable. All they want to do is have fun with Peanuts characters. <laughs> The last thing I want to do is show them the horrors of balloon war. <laughs> how many? How many, Sir Richard Branson? How many must I? Do you have any weapons, Dame Sir? I have a slingshot. A slingshot? Yes. Okay, good. That's a start. Uh, it's the balloon's worst enemy, don't you know? <laughs> That's true. What are you putting into that slingshot? Oh, rocks. Rocks, um, good. Sharp uh, rocks, I would hope. The buttons, sort of. Not, not the buttons. nice smooth round stones. You don't want those. You no, want like no, jagged nice rocks. jagged, yes. Jagged stones and rocks. Um, uh, heavy buttons. Um, <laughs> I found, as it turned out, in my pockets, a frog. <laughs> A frog. <laughs> uh, wow. Is there anyone else up in there in that balloon, or is that, that must be it? Uh, that's that's all the people that I know. <laughs> there must be three other people that we that are not friends of the show. There are strangers. There's people that I don't know. <laughs> that you enlisted. I, wait. I, hold on. I say, are you hustling me off of the balloon phone? <laughs> no, no. Of course not. I would... like you're trying to move me along. I, 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 someone else you'd rather talk to. I dare not do that. I, uh... Uh, uh, I, I would love to talk to you further. What else do you have for us? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, hey, hey, happy anniversary, of oh, course. Okay, God, uh, good, it's good. It's your first anniversary, I believe. First, yes, thank you. Uh, that anniversary is traditionally the gift given is uh, paper. Yes. You may give gifts made of paper. Sure. And so I have a little something for you. What is it? A piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank it's you. Inkjet paper, suitable for printing. Just one sheet. If you'd like to, yes. Those, you, well, the tradition is not papers, plural. <laughs> but they usually come in reams of 500 or so. You could only spare the one. I'm not made of paper, Sotrick. <laughs> but you are made of money. I you... have things. I am made of money. I'm very rich. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have all kinds of money in pounds, in dollars, in euros. <laughs> the Japanese are yahen. <laughs> But yes, I've gotten you a piece of paper. Thank you so much. When will I expect to receive that? What's that? 
What are you saying? When will, I, when will I expect to receive this piece of paper you speak of? Oh, I don't know. When am I going to see you next? <laughs> I'm not sure. I would love to see you sooner rather than later. I'll just keep it on me. I mean, if you're not going to make a big deal of it being folded. You know what I would love for you to do is to jot down any new Dame Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber ideas that you have for, for new musicals. Write it on... Oh, can I do? <laughs> for an anniversary party that takes place in a balloon that features a balloon to shore phone call. <laughs> And a an upcoming war of the balloons with <laughs> Sir Richard Branson. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't mean to. Sorry, my my apologies. One, one time I watched Gallipoli with ice and tea, and I thought <laughs> he was going to cry his brains out. <laughs> He's against war. He he said to me Is not he? long ago. He said, "Yo, man, the concept of war." That can eat a, t- <laughs> a hot uh, bowl. A of room t- temperature. <laughs> oh, 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 really? A room temperature? Yes. Wow, that's he. He varies that insult from person to person. It seems. I think it depends on the situation. <laughs> Is the bowl of dicks always the constant? Uh, no, no, no. He said a, 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 a room temperature glass of urine. <laughs> urine, really? Yes. You don't say. Yeah, I do say it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, Dame Sir A.L.W., um, if I'm saying that correctly. You thank, aren't. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for calling in. Thank John C. Riley and Ice-T for me. It is a pleasure to hear from you on our one-year anniversary. Scott, uh, thank you for all the laughs and for the long stretches of awkward silence. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yes, I provided those more more than the laughs, I would say. I teasy you, dear boy. <laughs> Enjoy your balloon ride. Thank you so much for calling in. I always do. Very good. All right, here we go. Well, then, coming to the stage now he is a seasoned uh, actor who has worked in Chicago and actually starred in the movie Chicago. Please welcome John C. Riley. <laughs> Set and match. I'm That's sorry. Real. That's <laughs> real. Oh, Who knows? Who on, knows? On my way home, I'd stop by a pizzeria to get some deep dish pizza. That's right. I'm from Chicago, man. Know my way around. Great to be back. Yeah, wow. Awesome. John, you haven't been on the show in a, a long time. It's, it's great to see you. Scott, it's been a while. Um, it's got busy with stuff, you know? It's like I got a lot of projects always going on. I think the last time I saw you, I was plugging a really underrated movie called Cirque du Freak, The Vampire's Assistant. <laughs> About like the su- super busy vampire. He's like, man, I gotta, like, first of all, I'm gonna live forever, one dead. I gotta go around and drink all this blood. How am I gonna keep track of my appointments? I need an assistant. I tried doing it myself, but it's like I got scra- <laughs> scrapped of paper everywhere. I'm like, what does this even mean? I wrote this right before. Right before the sun came up, obviously. <laughs> so, vampire p- puts an ad in the paper. Well, we're really going through this entire plot. Because right. <laughs> nobody saw it. It's your loss. <laughs> so I don't want to hear about spoilers. Everybody in this room had a chance to see Cirque du Freak, the vampire's assistant. <laughs> Listen, I know who listens to this show. You guys sit around, you get high, you watch The Room or whatever. (laughs) 
Now that you know all the words to that one, why don't you consider renting the vampire's assistant? Search to Freak. Look under the title, Search to Freak. You might not find it in a search if you look under the vampire's assistant. Don't start with V. Start with C. For Cirque. It's like the music man. Trouble, 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 trouble. Trouble's going on in River City. Let's go out of here. Hey, look out. I'm not as familiar with that one. It's great to be back in Chicago, though. Oh, yes. You missed it. You were in the movie Chicago. That's right. Yeah, it was fantastic. You played uh, uh, the uh, Andy, what was his name? Yeah, that's right. Did you see the movie? <laughs> I did, yes, I loved oh, it. Oh, well, I guess you didn't retain a lot of details. <laughs> Is it important to you that people watching your movies know your character's name? I want... I feel like, as an actor, if you don't remember my character's first and last name, that's on you. Because <laughs> I'm acting my ass off up there on the screen. I think there's... I, I feel like... Oh, shut up! I feel like if you don't remember my character's last name from role, then you're a rude person in life. And I bet you don't remember people's names after you meet them. Yeah. Well, there's one way to take care of that. Do, you know, what Jerry Maguire did and put it right there in the title. And then keep having people in every scene say, hey, you're Jerry Maguire. Don't you think that when I did Cirque du Freak, the vampire's assistant... I wanted the name of the vampire in the title. What was the name of the vampire? Oh, thanks a lot. You too? Man, oh man. Stop watching Troll 2. And give Cirque du Freak, the vampire's assistant, a try. I'm sorry. Sorry. I feel like I'm starting to sound like Mitch Hedberg. (laughs) I gotta watch it. Yeah. Something about the title, Cirque du Freak, the vampire's assistant. Did you get that flash photo? <laughs> I wish there could be more lights on us. <laughs> but this is the best we can do. Anyway, I really miss Chicago. I miss being here. Yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're, you're from here, actually. That's you right. You were a stage actor here. Grew and... up here. Yeah. Stage actor. Uh, I'm treading the boards again. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks so much for being here. But there's so much I miss about Chicago. Like, you know what I really miss? Because I've been living in Los Angeles for a really long time, right? Yeah. And look, don't get me wrong. Los Angeles, awesome, great. But certain things you only see in Chicago, and I miss it. Like, I really miss seeing uh, adults smoking around small children, right? <laughs> you just don't see it in L.A., but out here they're like, I don't care. Kid needs to learn the harsh realities of life. People smoke sometimes. <laughs> He's gonna end up smoking. Who are we kidding? <laughs> what what else do you miss about Chicago, John? Man. Graft. <laughs> just the, the concept of it, the art of graft. The... Oh, just like. You know, we perfected it, right? Yeah. It's been around for a long time, but I feel like Chicago really put the icing on the cake. Mm-hmm. Were, you, were you here when uh, our president, Barack Hussein Obamacare, was, was around? <laughs> no, I was gone by that time, but, you know, somehow I still voted for him in Chicago. <laughs> it <was> weird. <laughs> I got this... <laughs> it's like when you... <laughs> You run a stoplight, and then you get a picture of yourself in the mail running the stoplight. Like a photo of a ballot. Said, hey, you did this. I'm like, what? <laughs> they, were, they were grateful. They said, thank you. I was like, all right. Wow. So, what are you doing now? I mean, what is your... What do you see out there? So somebody's like, oh, is a waiter. 
<laughs> we shouldn't be afraid of them. They're just helping out here. You know what? I was afraid for a second that nobody else could see him. It was only me. <laughs> and he was like, death personified, looking for souls. <laughs> Anyway, I'm from Chicago. Great to be back in my hometown. Were you going to ask me something? Yeah, I can't quite remember what it I was. I thought you were going to ask me why I'm here. That's right, why are you here? Uh, Scott, I'm glad you asked me that. <laughs> As you mentioned, I play Andy in the movie Chicago. Yeah. Academy Award nominated role. That's right. Nominated. I mean, like, who won that year? I think he gave it to a dog or something. <laughs> I, th- I think it was like Adrian Pazdar or someone. Poor John, I'm so sorry. You're getting emotional. Oh, I'm, get, I'm getting teary eyed oh. just remembering <laughs> when the star of Prophet and Heroes, Adrian Badstar, won the Best Supporting Actor Oscar. What was that film again? I think it was like Two Cool Guys. Yes. Oh. To be fair, it's a pretty good movie. Yeah. <laughs> we will make a great double feature with Cirque du Freak. The Vampire, that's it, that's Anyway, so you remember my, my character, Andy from Chicago, had that great song, Mr. Cellophane. Oh, Mr. Cellophane, Mr. Cellophane should have been my name, Mr. Da, 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 da. You don't remember Where the words? You run around. I had myself hypnotized to forget the words of Mr. Cellophane so that I could enjoy it for the first time when I went to the premiere. It was really good, too. I liked it a lot. Who's this hypnotist that you go to? Is he like an L.A. guy or... You know my hypnotist. (laughs) I don't. I don't think we've ever talked about this. You... (laughs) I thought we went... I thought we went to the same hypnotist. Oh, no, I I go to a totally different hypnotist. Oh, he's got your head shot up on his wall. (laughs) It's not always the way. They get your head shot somehow. I mean, that's the only reason I went to this guy. I'm sorry, no. I... I also walked into like... 30 hypnotist office, sis. Mm-hmm. Just like poke my head in, check out headshots. Oh, okay. <laughs> B level, C level, D level. Uh oh, forget it. Mm-mm. Not for you. This guy's gonna turn me into a chicken or whatever. <laughs> then, you know, there's one guy. Take his name the amazing Rudy. And um, I looked at his waiting room. <laughs> And he had your head shut up there. I was like, all right, this guy I trust. Oh, man, I'm so sorry. Are you sure that it was my headshot on the wall? He didn't hypnotize you into thinking that you're best friend? Ooh. Wait. <laughs> well, I feel like that was a post-traumatic suggestion that got in there. Well, never mind. No, I'm not... Th- no, are you saying that we're... You think we're best friends? I, yeah, I was under the impression that we were best friends. What? What gave you that impression? <laughs> Last time you were on the show four years ago, we had a... Really good conversation. <laughs> oh, fair enough. <laughs> I guess we're best friends. Who's your hypnotist? Oh, my hypnotist is uh, Dr. Trumbar. <laughs> I hear good things. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so saying Mr. Cellophane. They call me Mr. Cellophane, a Mr. Cellophane should have been my name, Mr. Cellophane, cause you can walk right by me, look right through me, and never know I'm there. Yeah. Oh, thank you. 
smoking and instead he makes you lift your shirt and take pictures of your tits. That's wrong. It was, I, think, I think there's like a misunderstanding. I'm not saying that doesn't happen but in this instance it's like that's not it. That's not what we're talking about. Okay cool. Okay you're going at it. Cool. There's like just a guy you go to if you wanted to forget a song that you learned. So you can enjoy it for the very first time. Like that all, uh, cellophane song. Mr. Cellophane, a Mr. Cellophane, that ought to be my name. A Mr. Cellophane, who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Superhero, <gasps> and that's a very big deal. All these reboots of uh, classic superhero movies. Why well, they need it? They need a new one. <laughs> and who better to play the new superhero than me, as Mr. Cellophane? <laughs> so you want your own movie? Yeah, that's right. I think I should have my own movie franchise. Why play a dynamic superhero? Mr. Cellophane! What? How is Mr. Cellophane? Somebody's robbing the bank and murdering people. They didn't need to do both. <laughs> One or the other. What's happening in this city? A lot of stuff like that. A whole lot, lot of just conversations. conversations. <laughs> Excuse me. What? I have uh, a question uh, over here. One at a time. I yes, Victor. I have time for two more. Hello. <laughs> I work for the Chicago Reader. Oh, let me ask you a question here. What were you talking about? <laughs> cellophane. Oh, yeah, cellophane. cellophane. Yeah. What if a dude dressed as a sandwich is walking past the bank at the exact same time that Captain Cellophane is going to save them? Please, my father's Captain Cellophane. <laughs> Call me Mr. Cellophane. Yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Listen. Now, this is a great question. Scott, I hope yours is at least good. That was great. <laughs> this is a great question because Mr. Cellophane has all the powers of cellophane. <laughs> so, if this guy dresses as a sandwich, he looks shifty, like look, maybe he's holding a bag with a dollar sign on it. <laughs> <laughs> I cover him. And I smother him to death. Because <laughs> a human being can't be encased in cellophane. They need air holes. Yeah. I don't, Mr. Cellophane gives no air holes. Is that your catchphrase? Yeah. Right. That's right. That, and it's not, maybe it's not the hero that cellophane said he wants. But it's the hero cellophane that he needs. <laughs> What? 
And why don't bank robbers these days, why don't they transfer the money out of the bags that have the dollar sign into different bags before they walk out of the thing, you know? I think they want to make a clean getaway, and they don't want to take the time to, like, lift out all the loose dollars and coins, <laughs> put them into an unmarked bag, yeah. then take off their raccoon mask, <laughs> and their striped shirts, and change into regular people outfits. That makes sense. You gotta think like a criminal. <laughs> okay, that's, yeah, yeah, I've never done that. That's what Mr. Cellophane does. Wait, Wait so, so Mr. Cellophane thinks like a criminal? Yeah, that's how he beats him. Hold up, hold up. Yeah. What if you're at a frat party, all right? And you hear that someone's about to get date raped upstairs. But, okay. <laughs> this gets better, believe me. I guess, I guess you would have to. What if an overzealous uh, fraternity brother asks you, hey, could you lay yourself on the toilet so when Lenny comes in here and pees, it shoots back in his face? <laughs> Mr. Cellophane does not encourage pranks because pranks are like little crimes of friendship. <laughs> little crimes of friendship. Mm -hmm. You sound more like a villain, like Mr. Cellophane. That's like Hollow Man. It's gritty. It's gr oh. You mean a movie about Kevin Bacon, who's an invisible it's man? It's about Kevin Bacon, yes. You don't understand Hollywood lingo. I know the movie's not about the actor Kevin Bacon, but from an actor's perspective, you say that the movie is about you. Okay. That's how I would say things. So the movie Chicago was about you. Yeah, it was about Mr. Cellophane. Yeah. It was like an origin story. <laughs> Once he was a guy in the Depression whose wife treated him like garbage. <laughs> then he became a great superhero with all the proportional powers and strength of Cellophane. Would he not be in the Depression anymore? Would it be like modern day? Just to kind of... Yeah, like, somehow he like gets in a time machine or something. Oh, okay. So... Fights crime in a gritty urban landscape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, like what city? It's loosely based on Chicago. <laughs> and it's called Manhattan City. Missed how we, that got started. <laughs> I'm still confused by it. <laughs> hey man, got, got the audience in on the fun. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, wow. People, so, people listening want to hear that everybody's having a great time here. Yeah, so we have to point the mics and shake them at the audience. <laughs> well, I think it was Victor's specific style. Rather than just hold the mic out, <laughs> it's like waving the mic around that makes it even more exciting. Yeah. Right? Let's do a test. I'll hold it out the regular old boring way. See if we even get a nibble. Oh, people actually how oh, they fixed it. That. I didn't expect that. Thought people were just gonna be quiet. No, people were actively against it. Victor, try your method out. What do we got? Hamburger. When you spin the microphone like that, it picks up all the dynamic ranges that may be inside this True. building at any given moment. True. Victor, do you have any questions for uh, John about his movie, Mr. Cellophane? This sounds, do you watch movies at all? I do watch movies. Um, I saw that, that movie, The Vampire Assistant. Circus Freak? The Cirque Vampire Soleil. Assistant? Cirque du Soleil, Circus Freak. Uh, it was terrifying. Someone was doing acrobatics and fell and killed themselves. 
No, you that know, movie. Yeah, that I was something different. I think that was just Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> oh, you were there. My bad. Wait, I was, you were I was there at that particular performance? Cirque du Soleil uh, in Vegas. They were doing a vampire thing called the Vampire's Assistant. I, I think so. Or something. something. <laughs> and I think this is the same movie. Sound unlicensed. About. Why doesn't Cirque du Soleil license their shit anymore? I don't get it. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine, Scott. <laughs> so they wrap themselves up in tablecloths and whatnot and hang from the ceiling. They ride antique bicycles really funny and play Beatles music sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Just if they ever feel like it. Now, imagine if you were a utensil wrapped in a beautiful white napkin. All right, I'm there. <laughs> And someone said, can you hand me that butter knife? And you just let it roll. Roll off the napkin onto the floor where the knife breaks its back. So in this, in this scenario, on the butter knife, I was in the napkin, and then someone said, I want that butter knife. And then I, my back got broken. You're like a... Uh, yeah, you gotta put yourself into the shape of a butter knife. I mean, are you doing this correctly? I think so. Oh, you know who could have broken my fall? Mr. Cellophane! Oh, yeah. He's there to stretch himself over the ground, make a little trampoline that maybe some inner city tumblers could jump on. Sounds like you could use this guy. Um, I would like to speak to you after the show. <laughs> Exchanged emails and such. Talk about a team up? Mm hmm. Good old fashioned team up. <laughs> John, let me ask you do you actually have the powers of cellophane in real life? Um, I probably do, right? I mean, I can cover things, I can wrap stuff up, I could probably keep, um, a sandwich fresh for a whole day? <laughs> How did you gain these powers? I mean, you were just in the movie Chicago. Or... I might have been bored with them. I don't know. Maybe wow. Maybe it's a post-hypnotic suggestion from oh. The Amazing Rudy. Oh, wow. <laughs> Is The Amazing Rudy out there creating superheroes and supervillains? Ooh. The both? <laughs> I would rather he just did one or the other. <laughs> Well, he likes to see him fight. Ooh, like dangerous liaisons. <laughs> Les liaisons dans le rue. Les liaisons dans le rue. Oui, oui. Are you talking about Valmont? <laughs> well, see, y'all talking about Valmont? You're, you're, you're obviously a cinema buff because you know that there are two versions of that same story. One that everybody saw and one that no one saw. Said me. Yeah. You were the one person that saw the movie about <laughs> How was it? It was bullshit. <laughs> Bunch of people, I'm gonna fuck her. You better not fuck her. I'm the queen. Fuck that one. Nope, I'm gonna fuck her first. <laughs> it was repulsive, <laughs> fancy. Were there any songs? Yeah. I'll write a song with you, yeah. Ooh, let's team do up. it. Team up song. Good old fashioned team up. Uh, based on based on the movie Valmont that you saw? Yeah. Oh, all great. right, let's hear this song. You wait, amazing. you do Dangerous Liaison, and I'll do the Valmont part. All right, okay. And Scott? Yeah, what am I doing? <laughs> Give us a beat. Oh, right, here we go. Oh, yeah. A five, six, a five, six, seven, eight. Have my assistant call your vampire. That's right. He's an ancient Paris. There's a lot of crazy stuff going down in Paris. I'm gonna go and call my friend Ferris. Hula. Hula. Hula.
Yeah, sure. I don't know. I don't know if this is like a thing that people are allowed to say, but we just wrote the perfect song. I was like seeing a double feature of both of those movies. That was amazing. You know what? You know how like people listen to um, Dark Side of the Moon and then they watch Wizard of Oz. Um, what if we did like where you watch Valmont, but then you just lay Dangerous Liaison over top of it? You watch both movies at the same time and see if the story syncs up. It probably would, don't you think? Like if you did a split screen or something like that? No, nope, not split screen. No, really. One on top of the other. I don't know. I don't know what that quite means. I mean, <laughs> both movies are projected at the same time. Oh, okay. And you look up, up you look up on the screen, and it's like, <laughs> my head hurts. What's happening? Why would God allow this? And then you try to see if all the schemes are playing out at the same time as each other. Mm -hmm. I bet they would with a three-act structure. I bet they would just fall right. Right! Every single movie follows very rigid three-act structure. Mm -hmm. Any movie you can think of. Tell us about the Mr. Cellophane movie. What three-act structure would that First. I don't know if you're familiar with Joseph Campbell and the hero with a thousand faces. Sure, yeah, yeah. Oh, Joseph Campbell fans. They were Chicago! excited about that. <laughs> wow. Chicago loves Joseph Campbell. Campbell! That's right. J. Cam! Follow your bliss! All right. Look, it's fun to yell stuff out, but stop. So, so first, Miss Cellophane is granted these cellophanic powers. And he has to hide them from everybody. Mm. It's like, people will reject me. I freak. Not circuit freak. Okay. <laughs> Just regular freak. Like powder. And then, um. <laughs> and then, uh, there's danger in his city, in Manhattan City. Manhattan City, yeah. And he realizes, ah. <laughs> I'm the only one who can do anything about it! So then, he has to. Save someone's life uh-huh. from going stale. <laughs> Someone, <laughs> there's this woman that he's very attracted to. She's a very attractive lady. Sure. Played by um, Jenny McCarthy. And um, <laughs> people have really been waiting to see the John C. Riley Absolutely. Jenny McCarthy two-hander. She's terrific. Chicago's very own Jenny McCarthy. Yeah, that's right. Have you seen her e-cigarette commercial? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. She's really good at it. What a... She talks about how hard it is to balance being a mom of a special needs child <laughs> and going out to the club <laughs> and smoking. <laughs> She's a great lady. She's a great lady. <laughs> she thinks vaccinations are cool now. <laughs> so... <laughs> She's re- what? Once she got on board with vaccinations again, she's like, maybe I'll try other forms of technology, like e-cigarettes. <laughs> really? She's, that, she's that was really, a gateway. She's really open-minded. So, <laughs> so, Miss Cellophane saves her. She's been left out on a ledge. <laughs> what you have to understand is. She's a quarter sandwich. What? <laughs> On her maternal grandmother's side. Oh. So her maternal grandmother was a full sandwich. Yes. No. What? Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's right. So her, her mom's grandfather fucked a sandwich. Well, that's... I wouldn't put it that way. It's a bit crass. Wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> they were married. My, my great-grandfather was an Arepa. What? <laughs> My great great grandfather was an Arepa. What are you saying? <laughs> it's a Venezuelan empanada called an Arepa. An Arepa. Yeah. <laughs> My great great grandfather fell asleep, rolled over onto this Arepa. Nine months later, <laughs> my grandfather came out, Julius. That's right. People don't realize that. Sandwiches have the same gestation period 
as human females. And did you know that sandwiches are polysexual and they can reproduce by themselves? What? That's right. So, yeah. so her grandfather, her mom's grandfather, didn't even have to have sex with that sandwich. Well, no, the sandwich would have just had another sandwich. But a human oh, sandwich hybrid had a half sandwich. Needs. No. Why don't you let me yeah, finish my thought? My mind is still reeling from the picturing Valma and Dangerous Liaisons played on top of each other. <laughs> so, you know how sometimes you, you have a sandwich in a room and then you walk out of the room and you come back in, what? Two sandwiches? <laughs> sandwich I guess sandwich so. can reproduce asexually. But when it does get sexual, mm. a human being is there. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the result is a child who is part sandwich, has some sandwich in their genetic makeup. Wow. Do you so think that's it's possible to cut the sandwich in half? <laughs> like a worm? <laughs> I think Victor's asking that, that perhaps you cut the sandwich in half, walked away, came back, and thought there were two sandwiches there. <laughs> Gotta rethink <laughs> my theories on sandwich reproduction. <laughs> I really thought I'd stumbled onto something there. You you gotta think carefully about this because the entire plot of your movie hinges upon this. The whole franchise hinges on this. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like they're star-crossed lovers. Yeah. Because all cellophane <laughs> wants to do is cover sandwiches. <laughs> and sandwiches just want to be free. They don't want to be wrapped up in plastic. They yearn for death. <laughs> so, Mr. Cellophane saves his quarter sandwich girl, and all of their love is forbidden. They have a very graphic sex scene. That comprises the entire second act of the film. Wow. Yep. 60 minutes of the film. That's right. My goodness. Yeah, it's long. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. People, it's challenging. Yeah. That's why I got in this business. So I want to make challenging. It's like Deep Throat. What's it's like Deep Throat, that movie Deep Throat. That, that, no, you don't know? From history? <laughs> I mean, I guess any movie that's come out is from history at oh, this point. Guess what else? Everything is history that hasn't happened, that has already happened, <laughs> up to right now. <laughs> history. It's over. Yep. It's in the rear view. So then the final act of the film, <laughs> after a good 15 minutes of just lying in bed together, Mr. Cellophane finds Joseph Coney. <laughs> and he wraps himself around his head until <laughs> he passes out. And then he's taken to Manhattan City Jail. <laughs> Fantastic. Wow, this sounds amazing. God. John C. Riley, that sounds like an amazing film. Oh. And be sure to sit through the credits. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> Because you will see. <laughs> Nick Brownbag recruit Mr. Cellophane <laughs> for this. Boy. For the back to school initiative. <laughs> and I don't want to give too much away, but in the second movie, there's an appearance by Funyuns. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Almost got away free and clear. <laughs> nope. <laughs> had, to had to go, go back, back to the well. Had to go back. <laughs> For Nick Brownbag. <laughs> That's right. That's right. The vaguely racist oh. Nick Brownbag. Oh, like Nick Fury isn't vaguely racist? <laughs> eh, 
I guess you're right. Six. Six of one. Fair point. I'll allow it. Ooh, but watch yourself, counselor. <laughs> wow, fantastic. This very, is very interesting. <laughs> very interesting stuff. It was nice to have you here. Yeah. You've been just, just uh, enraptured by this whole story. I mean, it's a wonderful story. It's, it's the kind of movie I want to see. I want to take my children and my relatives at a pot sandwich. <laughs> Very good. To go see that movie. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Great pause work. <laughs> there. <laughs> All right, guys. I was well, giving you time to look through your Motorola there. <laughs> okay, thank find you. Find the next segment. <laughs> it is time for one of our favorite features on this show, of course. It's time for a little something we call Would You Rather. Victor? Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> People send me would you rather scenarios to our Twitter, which is at CBBWYR, comedy bing bong, would you rather. I will read it out loud. I'll then open the floor for questions. You can then ask me any question you like in order to help narrow down your choice. Okay? Uh, I imagine there's going to be some warning when the floor is closed for questions. <laughs> when I close this floor, there will be no warning. Oh! And thank you for phrasing that in the form of a statement. Oh, sure. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? <laughs> I'm sorry, John, the floor was not open. I need to dock you 798 points. That's no, fair. It's fair. Oh, so sorry. It's fair. All right, well, you're in the hole, so you're in the lead at this point, Victor, if you don't Oh, good, me. good. really gloating about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then we vote. I close the floor for questions. No warning. We vote, and then uh, we'll tally up the points. So here we go. So right now it's uh, Victor zero, John negative uh, 798. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, this comes to us from Brett Bates. Brett Bates. I don't get that. <laughs> That's what not funny. That, what is that a play on? Why have a Twitter handle if you're not going to make it funny? Right? Like, you know, Jack Off Instructor 3. <laughs> I bet the first Jack Off Instructor felt pretty good about himself. Yep. <laughs> Got it. Score! Technically, the first one is Jack Off Instructor. Exactly. And then Jack Off Instructor 1 is the second one. Oh. <laughs> Blowing my mind. <laughs> yep. All right, so this comes to us from Brett Bates. Brett asks, would you rather age one year every time you sneezed or repeat grades kindergarten through 12 as an adult? Could I take some of the martial arts I've learned? Oh, I have not opened the floor for questions. I'm so so. Whoa! Oh, no! Spectre, no! Oh, what? I think this is part of his ploy to, to take the gun out. You know, you know, wow, he's, he's just totally gone. He really left. He really did leave. Oh, wait, here he is. Whoa! He just took a lap. Trying to get out of here. I can't find the exit. <laughs> well, why don't you come back, Victor, then? Come on. All right, all right. I'm going to I'm gonna have to dock you two points for that. I'm so sorry. Thank you. 
All right. It's like different rules. Negative different 798, people. negative two. Here we go. All right, I've opened the floor for questions. I have a question. Yes, John. Uh, <laughs> in one where you age a year, very same as me, <laughs> how long do I live? You live the normal amount of time span that you would live in this life. So a standard human lifespan. Standard human lifespan between uh, anywhere from one day to, you know, 110. Those are the years of humans. <laughs> so let me ask you this question. Yes. How many times do I sneeze in my lifetime? How, how many times do you think that you've sneezed in your lifetime? Probably 110. But I think, I think the... <laughs> the point is, is... Oh, that, that sent Victor off for some Victor's reason. Gone. He left the stage again. I gotta use the restroom. What? <laughs> Why'd you bring that big-ass Gatorade on stage if this is what's gonna happen? Going down the stairs. Keep that mic on. Pants. Keep his mic on. Why? <laughs> I like to hear people be... All right. <laughs> Asked and answered. Floor's still open. <laughs> the, the point being that you age... Hey, you're literally upstaging me right now. <laughs> I know. I don't like it. Oh, you hell can't, yeah. You can't fool me. That's right. <laughs> I got trained by the best theater people you could imagine. I can imagine some great theater people. Imagine two right now. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Still off stage. Uh, Eat it! <laughs> wow. Wow, that is... He's really coaxing it out of there. Really feel, Yeah, it's exciting. I think the, the point I'm trying to make, though, is, is that you live the amount of time that you're going to live anyway. You just age every time you sneeze one oh. year. So... You can have the appearance and the body of someone who is 1,058, but you live as long as you're going to live. Does that make sense? Yeah. Let me ask you this. <laughs> How bad are my allergies in this reality? Great question. In the uh, sneezing one? Yeah. Or in both. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. I should. Yeah. <laughs> Why not find out, right? <laughs> Do you have allergy problems? Yeah, I do. I got a couple, yeah. Hey, Victor! <laughs> Found your way back? Hello. hello. Oh, hello. Oh, you're walking lighter. Now I feel like I'm not in the light as much as I was before. Oh, no, yeah, you really want to get down there. I don't like it. I'm torn between... Yeah. I'm, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay in the light, but I'm not going to turn and look at you. <laughs> I'm not going to get pivoted by you. That's right. Jeremy Piven, old Piven trick. <laughs> Upstaging people. Piven does that really? He back when he was he was balding. <laughs> he would hide his bald spot by keeping his back to the very back wall of the stage. So all the other actors would have to look up at him like this. Does he sing Jeremy Piven? I think he sings his own name, yeah. <laughs> It's an oldie but a goodie. That's right. Hi <laughs> for the path. <laughs> um, so your allergies in the former are terrible. Uh, you're allergic to everything. And so, I'm, so I'm sneezing quite a lot. Quite a lot, yes. And you, aging a year every time I do. Yeah, one calendar year. Or a, a fiscal year. I'll give you a fiscal year as well. Ooh. <laughs> April 15 to April 15. Yeah. <laughs> hey, has anybody seen Viggo? <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs> you just got Pippin, son. <laughs> <laughs> so stealthy. <laughs> In the uh, repeating grades, kindergarten through 12, as an adult, you have no allergies. They do not exist in that reality. No allergies. <laughs> Can you imagine such a beautiful, perfect world? Yeah. 
Victor, do you have a question? I could still be me. I will not be a little me when I go back to school, right? Great question. You actually uh, go into the body of little you. Yeah, that's exactly. But you're, right. not, you're not a child you. You are a midget you. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so I'm a midget me. You're, you're a smaller version of your adult self? Or is it like a Freaky Friday? Where your, con your adult consciousness... Sorry. I Let's see. Is it a Peggy Sue got married? Where your adult consciousness... Yes. It's transplanted into your child body. That is a Peggy Sue got married. No, you, uh, you just become a mini-me. So like, like the Indian in the cupboard. Uh, Whoa, that small? Yeah. That small. That small. Like, like little tiny action figure size? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, but that's smaller than I was when I was in school. No, you just don't remember it that way. Oh, so in this reality... People are, they're like little tin soldier size people as children? No, just you. Does everyone know this? No, no one notices. Do they even know I'm there? They never even know you're there. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Talafay. Did that hit to just make you forget the melody? Yeah. Well? <laughs> He's thorough. The he amazing really movie. did a good job. Four stars on Yelp. A friend of mine goes to him as well. Maybe I'll make a review. <laughs> Actually, I realized that might be impossible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it is. All right, Victor, you have a question? <laughs> now, let's say that I become a little Indian in the cupboard. Sure. Do I have to respect the normal laws of society? <laughs> or can I crawl into people's pants? Crawl in the little school lunches and eat a giant Cheeto. A Cheeto the size of a cigar. In this way, a Cheeto the size <laughs> of a cigar? What kind of cigar? What are you doing? Stop pivoting each other! Oh my. Oh. God, please so I, watch out. In this, in the, the K through 12 scenario, um, if a Cheeto's that big, will it support my weight? Do I still weigh as much as a regular human being, or do I have the proportionate weight of an Indian in the cupboard? You're like Ray Palmer the Atom. You have the weight and strength of a human being. Some heavy-duty nerds over in this section. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had him at the Atom's real name. <laughs> Uh, but, like Ray Palmer the Atom, am I able to control my mass? Yes, and you're able to travel through telephone wires as well. You hop into a telephone, and you can instantly travel to wherever that person is calling from. I don't really care about that. I just want to... I just want to be able to, like, lie down on a Cheeto like it's a futon. By the way, in this scenario, there are no Cheetos. I, this is premature, but I might have made my choice. Don't vote yet. No, I won't. I won't. That uh, would be a well, classic. Okay, no Cheetos. Can we use marshmallows as a love seat? I was going to ask that too. Because life can be pleasant. <laughs> Sit at a nice, comfy marshmallow. And then when you're rested, you're just like... Turn around and start eating that motherfucker. Yeah. Which is more comfortable uh, as furniture, food stuff or doll furniture? Oh, wow. I've never thought about that. In both realities. <laughs> in both realities. Yeah. Well, in the Indian in the cupboard situation, <laughs> doll furniture is more comfortable, but you can't eat it. And uh, in the sneezing situation where you age one year, uh, uh, food stuff is more comfortable. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You've given me much to think about. <laughs> yeah.
I'm pretending we're on a motorcycle. <laughs> Gotta lean into it. Wait, he's doing like the PA Ta or something. <laughs> he's really stealing focus with that dramatic pose. <laughs> he looks like a beautiful statue. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing I'm and just, how long I'm can just, you keep it up? I'm just uh, casually altering the stage picture. <laughs> oh, really? I'm just getting jumped oh, over here. Oh, come on now. By the speaker. Come on. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. He picked the, he picked the hardest one. <laughs> the least sustainable pose. <laughs> Watch me. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Um, in the sneezing one... When I sneeze, is it uh, embarrassing? Like an embarrassing sneeze or is it just like regular? Is it one of those sneezes where it's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> or is it like the horrible Im- implosion sneeze where it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to, I just want to know it is a normal human sneeze. You wonder, you wonder if... There are varieties of sneezes in this reality? That's not what I asked, but... (laughs) You might as well tell me. (laughs) There's every sneeze except for the one where you go, Blah! All right. Sounds good. (laughs) Why don't you put on a show for me? I'm in the audience now. (laughs) That's right. I wanted to see what it felt like. <laughs> You've never been in an audience before, have you? Never. <laughs> oh, God. I bet that. Bet that I felt all of that one, right? <laughs> Woo! Um, it is embarrassing, though, because every time you sneeze, like, poof, you're just a year older. D- it does my face make a creaking sound as the, <laughs> as the lines stretch across it? Is it like some tree beard shit? A very loud creaking noise that the entire world can hear. The world? Yeah. So they all know that it's happened. And they're like, boy, John just sneezed again. Everyone knows it's me? Yeah, everyone knows it's it's not like It's not like people in China are like, what was that? They're like, oh no, John C. Riley. Go take a Claritin. (laughs) Maybe your neighbors have questions? Yeah, you have questions about the scenario? No. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. Worth it. How about you? Any questions about either scenario or about hello, Mr. Cellophane? Does Mr. Cellophane exist in either one of these scenarios? Ooh, the best question was just out. <laughs> oh, yeah. The movie Mr. Cellophane exists in the sneezing scenario and is the biggest movie franchise of all time. What? There's a movie made every odd-numbered year. And I'm the star? No, because you're getting so much older, you age out of it. <laughs> Do I at least get to be in the first one? By the time they make it, you're just too old for it. Really? Yeah, sorry. Well, who came up with the idea in that reality? Zach Efron. <laughs> what? Sick of taking that guy's table scraps. Yeah. <laughs> he was offered the lead in Cirque du Freak, the vampire's <laughs> assistant. And he turned it down. And then I swooped in like a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> and now that's why everyone knows me as a vampire who needed an assistant. <laughs> <laughs> what was going on with that vampire? Why did he need an assistant? It just stuff got away from him, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Took on, he took on too much stuff. That seems like a terrible idea. That's a, an offensive joke that you are making a reality. 
Also, these stools do not seem terribly stable. It's not like shakers made them or something. <laughs> I've closed the floor for questions! There was no warning! All right. I'm planking. Totally plank that. <laughs> Seriously, though, let's get to the bottom of this query. Yeah, Victor. <laughs> Uh, I've been thinking long and hard about it. Now, yeah. what if I was, uh... What happened? Um, Is it over? <laughs> I closed the floor for questions. That's true. Oh, shit. <laughs> no. I'm gonna, I gotta dock you points. Dock me like four points, man. I gotta dock you more than that, man. The classic, would you rather plunder? <laughs> Gotta dock you five points, my man. I'm so sorry. All right. I All deserve right. that. Negative nine. All right. How do you like to vote, Victor? You have enough information. Oh, hello. I think it's pretty clear. Um, I was thinking about choosing sneezing and getting old, but then if I started sneezing when I was a baby, I'd be an old, retarded person. You mean retired, right? Well, retired and retarded. Because my brain hasn't developed as fast as my, my body. Mm -hmm. So we go like, that old man should be wise. And I'd just be like, ah, <laughs> They might just think you're sad, like sad old man. Like maybe your, your loving wife died. And all she wanted you to do was pick her house up, put some balloons, <laughs> put her on a mountain, and defeat an evil Zeppelin pilot. I would rather be an Indian in the cupboard. Yeah. And I'd like to use a soup can as a DJ booth. <laughs> It's a great answer. Thank you. Very good. John, how do you like to vote? Well, as tempting as it is to be somewhat of a superhero, like Ray Palmer to Adam, be able to adjust my mask so I could crush a snack food or lie atop it like it's some edible furniture. I think in the end, even if I don't get to play Mr. Cellophane, I would love for my vision to make it to the silver screen <laughs> in some reality. So I gotta go with the sneezing business. That's beautiful. I know. Yeah. I'm an artist. I say things yeah. that make people cry. But guess That's what? Hmm? What I didn't tell you is in that scenario, you get to make a cameo in all of these movies. Oh, I'm a... a Stan Lee type cameo where you're some dumb burglar who gets hits in the nuts <laughs> by Mr. Cellophane. I assume I have some dialogue, like a funny thing that I say. Yeah, you go, Oi, my nuts. <laughs> Oi, my nuts. Yeah, see? Amazing. Are you happy? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, you chose incorrectly. Victor Ramos is our winner. Congratulations, Victor. Thank you, thank you. That's thank how we you. play Would You Rather.
boy. Fantastic. Well, guys, this has been, yep, 4 a.m. <laughs> this has been a good show. We've had a lot of fun here. Uh, we thank you for your kind indulgence. And <laughs> what are you doing? I, I didn't realize we had to strike the set. <laughs> yeah, no. We have to strike everything tonight. <laughs> Guys, come on, come on over here. Sure. My best friends in all the world. <laughs> Guys, we want to thank you uh, for having us. Any, any last words you want to say to the, the great people of Chicago? <laughs> um, I want to say we tried really hard up here. Um, the other team also wanted uh, to win. So we really got desperate there in the fourth quarter trying to, trying to bring the win home to all these great people. But uh, we were playing against the people, and uh, I think they just had a better night. They were the better team tonight. Yeah. Well, okay. John, anything you'd like to say? Um, yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, I get it. I just want to say, Chicago, I love you. It's been great to be back and see everybody. And I hope you'll take my words to heart and rent. <laughs> so defeat the vampire's assistant. OK, you know him as a world-renowned actor, Academy Award winner. Uh, he is an Academy Award, uh, not, no, not, a, not winner, so sorry, Academy Award nominee. Oh. <laughs> I mean, really, you're disappointed by that? Very disappointed. I mean, nominee is pretty good. Oh, I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> uh, you're back on board. Uh, he is an Academy Award nominee from the movie musical Chicago. Uh, please welcome John C. Riley to oh, the stage. Fantastic. That was fantastic. Mike Mitchell of the Birthday Boys? No! Hey, I'm a fan of your work. Thank you very much. What are you doing for Boogie Nights? What's that? Boogie Nights. Yeah. Great, great film. Part of my work. A while ago. Done a few things since then. Scott was nice enough to point out that uh, I was nominated but did not win an Academy Award. Sorry about that. I... That's all right. You could have let him believe it for a little bit. I don't know if anybody would have challenged you. I think people would have been like, eh, you didn't win it, but uh, what am I going to yell? <laughs> do you know uh, Ducky Powell? Of course I do. <laughs> what? Where would you have met Ducky? I'm just a fan of skiing. <laughs> but the word gets out. I don't ski myself, but um, I like to read those magazines about skiing. And uh, I do too. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, uh... Oh, thank you! <laughs> John, it's a pleasure to see you. I haven't seen you in about a week or so. And, it's, uh... it's been a little while. I think, like... I think, like you say, a week? <laughs> Around seven days or so. Yeah. 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 It's Chicago. More than, more than six, less than eight. Yeah. <laughs> Chicago was the last time I saw you. And you're... That's right! My hometown, Chicago! Yeah. Are you from Chicago? Why are you here? <laughs> what? Why would you move from one weird cold place to another one? <laughs> Not everyone can live in Jamaica or, you know. Do you think I live in Jamaica? <laughs> no, I'm saying a hot place. Not, every, you know, if everyone moved to the hot places. Uh, you know what though? There's, there's places in between here and Jamaica though. <laughs> that you can live. 
I mean, it's pretty much California or Florida. Those are the only... Florida. You're not Thumbs a fan. down. I don't like that humidity. It messes up my hair. <laughs> When you think about it, Florida is kind of shaped like a thumb going down, going boo. Yeah, boo us. <laughs> it's asking to be snapped off the air. It really <laughs> is. Like a drumstick. Thrown in the garbage. <laughs> Throw Florida in that floating garbage pile in the ocean. I like to think that someday when, you know, the, the, the people in the Middle East invade us and take over the country, that they'll just... <laughs> Yeah, you like to think about this? <laughs> I'll just snap it off like a drumstick. Excuse me while I call it TSA. <laughs> TSA? Yeah, I'm going to call... Tina Fey? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to call not only airport security, I'm also going to call creator of 30 Rock, Emmy award-winning actor and writer, Tina Fey. Oh, wait, she didn't win. Oh, no, she did. She did, yeah. Yeah. I didn't want anybody to yell out. The award police are here. <laughs> now you're mad at the award police. Because before you were saying there wouldn't be any. I know. I am mad at the award police. <laughs> Fuck the award police. <laughs> hey, do you know uh, our friend Ice T who does uh, Cop Killer? Oh, yeah, with Body Count? <laughs> yeah. Body yeah. <laughs> he was on the show last night. He's a good guy. Oh, he's a great guy. <laughs> you ever acted with him? He's a great actor. No, I, I tried out for every. Uh, version of Law and Order. What? <laughs> yes, I auditioned. This is like after, after an Oscar nomination. I'm like, what? please, let me be on Law and Order, Dick Wolf. <laughs> Were you just calling him that, or did you know that was his name? <laughs> I might be using a Chicago area regional insult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dick Wolf. <laughs> hey, Dick Wolf, get me another beer out of the fridge. I said deep dish, Dick Wolf. <laughs> what? Why did you make me this flat pizza? So you tried to be on Law & Order. Even Criminal Intent, they wouldn't let you on Even that one! Oh, the nerve of them. Even the reality show one that uh, was about lawyers yeah. in San Diego? yeah, yeah. Did you try to be on that? Yeah, I was like, look, I'll show you what I look like on video. You've only ever seen me on film. This is what I look like on video. Wow. They're like, doesn't make a difference. <laughs> they were like, you're too recognizable, and I feel like the audience would not be able to get lost in the story. I mean, that hasn't been a problem for the Bells. No, I know. This might also have something to do with it, too. I said, I was pitching my own story idea. <laughs> and I said, I want to be a millionaire hot air balloonist who kills a race car driver and gets away with it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that Dick Wolf's problem is. I don't That's know. Really Dick Wolf. Yeah. Wow. So, John, what brings you here to Boston? I mean, I'm glad you asked, Scott! <laughs> I'm here. Because I'm going to do a play, getting back to my theatrical roots, and I'm doing this play that's a one-man play all about the life of recently captured criminal Whitey Bulger. <laughs> it's called Bulging with Crime. <laughs> Colon, the Whitey Bulger story. Some people were moaning like they, they've been personally affected by <laughs> Well, he's a divisive character. Because some people are like, thumbs down, he's like the Florida of people. <laughs> Throw him on the floating garbage island. And other people are like, he was like a Robin Hood type figure who protected the neighborhood from people who didn't want to be murdered. <laughs> When those people move into your neighborhood, then it's over. When people like when people who don't want to be murdered start taking over, forget it. Did you know you're from here? 
Yeah, yeah. No, did I know him? Yeah. No, but he wasn't very oh. Robin Hood-ish, I guess. And, and well, that's what some people say. <laughs> some oh. people say the other thing that I said. <laughs> My thesis statement is that people say two different things. That's true. Well, that is true. Thank you very much. <laughs> what exactly were his crimes? I guess I'm not as familiar with the story. Name one, and I'll tell you if he did it. Because <laughs> it would be easier that way. Racket, racketeering? Yep. Yeah. Check fraud? You mean kiting checks? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Probably. That's really not too bad. Uh, um, racketeering? Wait, I said that already. <laughs> yeah, it was two seconds ago. Where did you oh, go? Oh, lo- loan, sh- loan sharking? Yep. Okay. What about biking without a helmet? <laughs> Guilty as charged! Harley. <laughs> He's very vain about his hair. Riding in the carpool lane without a passenger? Absolutely! Wow. One time we stuck a dead body in there. Like, there's two of us, officer. Here's your graft. That's always the fear of that with a criminal that it'll, it'll escalate. So if you ride once without anyone, then you'll put a dead body in the next time. Yeah. I agree with you. <laughs> Thank you. And I appreciate that. Two gentlemen of the theater. <laughs> yes, of course. We both were trained in the theatrical We've tradition. We've tread the board. Mm-hmm. Wow, so this, this sounds like an amazing project. I mean, who... Uh, are, uh, who Do you who, want to see a little preview? <laughs> is this exclusive? It's exclusive. Wow. This, uh, this is a little matinee. It's just a little excerpt. I'll kind of condense it, right? Give you the, the sort of details of his life in a table of content style. All right, so here's how it opens. This chord is driving me crazy. Here's how it opens. Is that um, it's like stage is black and then a single spotlight <laughs> pin dot on the curtain widens out and into that circle you see young whitey bulger. <laughs> Well, well, look who's here. It's me, Whitey Bulger. That kingpin of Buster Crime. What do I feel like doing today? A murder? Some racketeering action? Maybe I'll hijack some trucks or sell some arms. I know, I'll just kick this guy in the face because I don't like the way he's looking at me. What, you want me to inform on my criminal buddies, FBI? Go screw. <laughs> Ah, I'm in jail. Now I'm out. All right. Thanks, everybody in the neighborhood, for thinking I'm great. I think you're great, too. I might murder you. I'm on the run. I got a, I'm on the 10 most wanted list. I got to hide. What's this? I just invented liquid paper. I'm going to make a fortune. Wait, 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 wait. What's that? Wait, 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 wait. Don't interrupt me, because this is starting to get good. What? Of course I'll audition for a band for a television show. What do you want me to do? Play the guitar and sing? Absolutely. What's this song? It's written by Tommy Boyce and Hart, amazing songwriters. Let me sing it for you. What am I doing hanging around? I should be on that plane and gone. All right, now we're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Me and Peter Tork. Davy Jones, Mickey Dolan. <laughs> How did we get here? We were just four young guys in Boston murdering people and fixing horse races. And now we're rubbing shoulders with Chuck D and Bruce Springsteen. Well, it's time for me to die now. It goes into the future. But before I do, I say goodbye to this tiny city in this big bottle that's the last remnants of my home planet. (laughs) Goodbye, planet Earth. I tried to protect you and be good to you and murder people. I hope you'll remember me as I was, Whitey Bulger, the (laughs) super-powered leader of the monkeys. (laughs) That's like... 
That's like a little sneak peek. I accidentally told you the entire story, including the ending. So sorry. I, th I feel like you're getting some of the details mixed up. Like which? Well, I, it, I feel that for a long stretch of time you were telling the tale of Mike Nesmith. From the monkey? <laughs> the one you didn't name. Peter Shark, Timmy Jones. Mickey Jones. David Jones. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't say Mike Nesmith? No, you said uh, all of them except for Mike Nesmith, but then you said Whitey Bulger. <laughs> well, because I'm playing Whitey Bulger. <laughs> you know, I get that. That is crystal clear. I mean, it's in the title. Sure. Yeah. Right after the colon. And we did, we did talk about it before I started the scene, so I feel like I kind of covered all my bases. <laughs> I don't know what we're arguing about. I'm also, I'm also wondering about the, uh, the end beat that sort of deals with the last city of Kandor. Oh, I didn't even say that. How did you know? Well, did you see my script backstage? <laughs> There's a script to that? Yes. <laughs> How long is it? It's 300 pages long. What? Yep. It's like, the, the show itself is, it's like Nicholas Nickleby length. It goes on for a really long time. And there's a dinner break and a lunch break. And then the next morning is a breakfast break. <laughs> what are you serving? I'm sorry, there's no shower break. You're just going to have to like, be as clean as possible when you show up at the theater. Bring it, but it's like stick a deodorant in your pocket so you can freshen up. In the morning. What do you serve during the breakfast break? This sounds actually okay. It's continental. It's... Oh. You get like a croissant, uh, maybe some instant oatmeal. That's like cheating at breakfast. <laughs> Look, producing a show, it's a lot of money. <laughs> well, what are you serving during the dinner? Same thing. What? <laughs> yeah. Croissants and instant oatmeal. <laughs> but red wine. <laughs> Blend. <laughs> Cab Frank. <laughs> wow, I mean, this, it, it sounds great. I mean, uh, when do you suppose you're gonna get uh, this up on its feet? Oh, tomorrow. What? <laughs> yes. Where are you doing it? We're doing it right here. <laughs> on this stage? Yep. <laughs> wow. That's my mark right there. See that X? <laughs> that X right there? Yep. I walk to that spot, I stand there. <laughs> for a day and a half. <laughs> During the dinner break, I'm still performing. <laughs> but I'm performing, while everybody goes out as dinner, I perform just like the mundane parts of Whitey Bulger's life. Like, oh yeah. Like waiting for elevators, <laughs> packing for trips, reading the paper, stuff like that. Yeah. Wow, I, uh, how, how much does this cost to get in, if I may ask? Well, I mean, the theater, it's expensive, you know? Yeah. It's like, to get to see live entertainment, that's like a big deal. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean you, you're an Academy Award nominated actor. Yeah, only nominated, as you pointed out. <laughs> yeah. And um, so it's a little pricey. It's $1,000 a ticket. What? <laughs> how many, and it's here in this theater, wow. I mean, yes. how many have you sold so far? Uh, not a lot. None, but um, that's why I'm here today. <laughs> okay. And I feel like word of mouth, it's like you hear it from me, you saw the preview. Right now, people are like calling up their business managers and stuff, like, make this happen. <laughs> Transfer some money from savings and ejecting. <laughs> of course, I don't know the numbers of my Swiss bank account. That's what I hired you for. Listen, sell us some of my stocks. I gotta see this show. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. And you guys are all I mean, you're all rich, right? <laughs> Theater is a rich people's yeah, no, entertainment. I, uh, that, uh, it sounds so great. I, I wish we weren't moving on to another city. I wish I could be there. Uh, do you have anyone else in the show ever? Nope! <laughs> oh! There is also the ghost of Christmas future. <laughs> which is played by an African gray parrot with a sheet over it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just flying all over the place because he's confused. <laughs> but it was very effective. 
And you... over and over again, he's just saying, I want grapes, I want grapes. <laughs> Oh, no. Do you have a question? <laughs> the, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck are making a Whitey Bulger movie. You think that might be competition? <laughs> yeah, man. I think it might be. <laughs> I invested so much money in this play. Really elaborate Whitey Bulger costume. What's in the costume? What did he wear? Clothes. <laughs> Do you ever work with those guys, Matt and Ben? Uh, here and there, you know, various things. Yeah. We did an audio book together. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's uh, amazing. Uh, where can people get that? What book is it? Uh, it's the dictionary. <laughs> what? <laughs> We did the audio book for the dictionary. How do you split it up between I, three people? I did like A through J. I think David did L through Z. And then Affleck like really phoned it in. He only did. Yeah. I heard okay. I, I, that I, I'm reminded of that story now because I read about that you did that. And I, I read that you retained every single yes. word Absolutely. that was in the dictionary. That's right. <laughs> well, from, from, from A to J, from from a to of J. course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jamboree! <laughs> <laughs> An informal party, mostly outdoors, usually involving music. <laughs> Oh, it's a noun. I forgot to say it's a noun. <laughs> <laughs> You're giggling like a little schoolgirl. <laughs> so happy. I love it. I, love, I just love hearing words. <laughs> They're pretty good. Yeah. Wow, that, uh, that's so incredible that you guys did that. Um, and what are your plans, I mean, after opening night when undoubtedly your show will close? <laughs> what does John C. Riley do then? I'll tell you one thing, I'm really excited to see this uh, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Whitey Bolton movie. Just to see where yours was inaccurate? Oh, I hadn't even thought about that, but... It sounded good to me, but... I guess I'll be doing that... Anyway... <laughs> Why don't you wait for that movie to come out and then you can, you know, people will have Whitey Bulger fever. <laughs> you know? I guess... For me... I wanted to be the one to spread Whitey Bulger fever. <laughs> I wanted to be, you know, ground zero or whatever. Yeah. You didn't want to come along after people were inoculated from Whitey Bulger fever. I wanted to be the typhoid Mary of Whitey Bulger fever. <laughs> I'm immune to it. But I'm a carrier. Yeah. Everyone who comes in contact with me has it. By the way, it there's no no cure for Whitey Bulger fever! Oh. Except to see Bulger with crime! The Whitey Bulger story. Colon in the middle. Immune. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Impervious to disease or sickness. That checks out. I mean, I it seems to me like you, you haven't known a lot of... Uh, have you known a lot of heartache in your career, in your life? I mean, sure I have, man. Really? I'm, I'm an actor. I use that to, 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 to get into my role. <laughs> What's the biggest heartbreak that you've ever had? Like, can you... Like, is it personal? Is it professional? Have it's you... Both. Have you ever found love? Well, yeah, I'm married and I have kids. Oh, I just... I had no idea. <laughs> You didn't answer the question? So, yeah, it was not... <laughs> well, it was not an arranged marriage. We're getting closer to the answer. <laughs> Very snide. <laughs> Skier. Do you know what those words mean? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Which I did. Which I did. I've known heartache in my life, yeah, man. You know, like... I fell in love with CoStar one time. This is uh, when I was doing uh, Days. 
Sorry, Days of Thunder. <laughs> Days of Thunder, the Tom Cruise movie? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know you were in that. You've done two race car movies? I'm like the only other guy in it. <laughs> I play his best friend. Yeah, that's why it's so hilarious when I did Talladega Nights, because I was in Days of Thunder. So tell Robin me. is racing! What, how, what do you need me to do to prove it? How's this? <laughs> Pretty right. convincing, right? Yeah, pretty, yeah. For the listener, I did something visual. <laughs> um, and it elicited a laugh. Yes. So that's what that was. <laughs> so I was working on Days. It was like one of my first big movies. I just done Casualties. Casualties of War. <laughs> Casualties of the War? Casualties of War. What is with you, man? I feel like you're trying to undermine me. No, why? We're friends. Why would Are you we? That? Well. Hey, anybody need any bottles clinked? Because apparently it's a service they provide here. <laughs> Bring your own bottles. Free clinking. Bring bottles from home. The clink is on us. <laughs> it's one of my favorite theater sounds. The clink, clinking of beer bottles. I, I, I like the uh, credit card machine. Oh, that's a good one. You know what I love in the theater? When someone orders a margarita. (laughs) You know that James Bond used to order shaken, not stirred, uh, just so he could upset actors that were in plays. He wanted to just rub plays, that's right. That's why James Bond is always unwrapping hard candies and lozenges. (laughs) He hates the theater. I don't get it. You know? Why does James Bond hate the theater, do you think? I don't know. He's such a manly man that I think just the very idea of it is an affrontery to his whole persona. Mitch? <laughs> Mitch, uh, why do you think... Yeah, let's go down the line. Why do you think James Bond hates the theater? Well, because any... I guess for James Bond, any moment could be a trap uh, in some way. So, so he probably doesn't feel comfortable anywhere, honestly. I guess it's hard to know if you're watching, you know, an opera, for instance, and everyone has spears... You know, like all of a sudden they may just turn to James Bond and like throw him at him. That's true. Oh, although they could do that to anyone if you think about it. (laughs) That's why the theater is really dangerous. It's more dangerous than people think. Have you ever killed anyone during one of your shows? Yeah. What? (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Which show? If you're doing if you're doing a long run of something, like let's say True West, right? Okay. For which I won a Tony. Not only nominated, but won. (laughs) The one award you've won. Um, it was me and Phil Hoffman, and we were switching off parts. Wait, right? Philip Seymour Hoffman? Oh, yes, forgive me. <laughs> Philip Seymour Hoffman? That's how you'd know him. <laughs> um, so we were, we were switching off parts. Like, one week, I would do one role, and then the next week, I would do the role that he did. It's, two, it's a two-hander. Right, and what were those characters' names? Oh, everyone knows. <laughs> so... <laughs> The important thing is we switch roles. And that only staves off the boredom for only so long. And after a while, we're like, let's bring poison darts to the show. <laughs> and then, like, during one of your monologues, I'll just, like, grab a straw and just start shooting pointing darts into the audience. And we'll see who we get. <laughs> and it's trickier than you think. Because you gotta get him in the neck or it won't work. If you just get him in the face, it's like, hey! <laughs> but then they go, ah. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah. But if you get him in the neck, it's lights out, man. <laughs> and we would be really subtle about it, too, like pretend to read the newspaper and then, <laughs> like, buy the paper. <laughs> just a hole in the paper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but mostly. You know, because obviously the audience is very important to us as artists. You know, we respect the audience. We mostly do it to ushers. <laughs> but if somebody was like snoozing, because like matinee shows, uh-huh. get the blue hairs in there. Sometimes <laughs> these ladies fall asleep. We're like, let's kill that one. <laughs> Just snooze him right to heaven. Yeah. Sometimes, like on those Sunday matinees, it would be all old people in the audience, and sometimes the entire audience would fall asleep. And then we would just play cards. <laughs> and then at the end of the show, like after 90 minutes, we just clink a bunch of bottles that would wake everybody up. And we'd just be bowing. <laughs> oh, thank you. 
And people just thought they saw the greatest thing they'd ever seen. They plotted like crazy because wow. nobody, everybody was too embarrassed. <laughs> Audi theater audiences are embarrassed a lot. Yeah. yeah. The theater, theater is a very embarrassing art form <laughs> for the audience because it makes you self-conscious. And especially if someone breaks the fourth wall and they're like looking into the crowd. It's like, yeah. ugh, I don't like it. Yeah, it makes you feel weird, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like the abyss gazes back also. Yeah. That's from the Watchmen comic book. <laughs> Ducky questions? Or statements? Anything? You want to lend a hand here, buddy? Exclamations? I had a, uh, a thought. Here we go. I thought, this is going way back in the interview. Way, way back what? Did you, in this interview, oh, this sure. uh, podcast, did you have access to a, a time machine when you were coming up with the Whitey Balter story? Is that what that was? <laughs> I guess I did. I mean, by time machine, do you mean some sort of light craft that you step into... Manipulate some controls, and then when you step out, you're in another time? No, I, I miss... I, no, that's not what I'm thinking oh. about. Something with sort of the alphabet on a row, and you're pushing down on each one. The alphabet on a row. And a piece of paper will cut... You, Do you mean a typewriter? Yes, yeah. reuse. That's what I was mixing I up I did with. have access to a typewriter, okay. yes. <laughs> Interesting. But you know what? Typewriters make books. And aren't books kind of like time machines? <laughs> yeah. Good question, Dougie. Thank you very much, Scott. Yeah, fantastic. Well, gosh, I wish you luck in everything you do. Wait, let's give Mitch a chance to ask one more question. Okay, here you go, Mitch. Hometown. Oh, no. I, I... See? Big Mitch crowd. <laughs> That's truly embarrassing. Um, the theater. Did, did you, you worked with, on Boogie Nights, you worked with Mark Wahlberg, who was Man, a... Man, Boogie Nights. <laughs> A long time ago. It's 1999. Uh, It's one of my favorite movies of of yours. Uh, I think you do great. It seems to be the only movie that you're aware that I was in. (laughs) What? (laughs) Was Mark Wahlberg as a hometown guy? Was he was he fun to work with, Mark Wahlberg? He was a lot of fun. You know. He's a fun little dude. Yeah. He's small? Very small. Is he, is he like a Clooney on the set? Like a prankster? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Loves playing pranks. Yeah, I bet. He seems so fun. He pranks like, um... Like, he walked through a door ahead of you, and then he would turn around and slam the door in your face. Oh. <laughs> what a great guy. Sometimes, like, if you're carrying... <laughs> your lunch... You know, yeah. right for lunch, you carry your lunch to a table, like smack the tray out of your hands. And your lunch go on the ground. Oh man, classic, classic stuff. Fun, it's a lot of fun. Would he let you go get another lunch? Oh yeah, you were allowed to go get another lunch. <laughs> he wouldn't physically block you from it. No, 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 but he would mock you all the way to the table. Yeah. You'd say, look who dropped their lunch. <laughs> I'm Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Rich movie star. Yeah, he said his own name a lot. He yeah. explained. He said his own name and I explained who he was. <laughs> Formerly of the Funky Bunch. That's right. Man, one time, on Boogie Night, the Funky Bunch showed up to set. Oh, no. That's awkward. They stole typewriters. All the writers of Boogie Nights were there. They were writing the movie. The whole team? Yeah. The, the Funky Bunch walked into the Boogie Nights writer's room Stole your typewriters. The and bo- now that they were doing it, we're stealing your typewriters, Boogie Nights writers. <laughs> and then they went out and they smashed them with bats. Oh, no. Yeah. Because they wanted him to come back to That's the Boogie right. Bunch. That's oh. right. Oh, man. So how did the, the staff of Boogie Nights, how did they continue writing the movie? Everyone was terrified. At that point, they were just like, keep talking about pornography. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. So the last, <laughs> the last half of that movie is improvised. Oh, the last two thirds of that movie is improvised. Wow! Yeah, they came early on in the process. Even we, the we shot it in order. What the, re- the reveal at the end when he reveals himself yep. in the mirror? That was improvised. Yeah. He just took out his real penis. 
No, he had a prosthetic. <laughs> Wait, what's he doing with that? He had it made in case he ever had to hide from anyone. <laughs> Because it's a way you can be identified, like your fingerprints. Uh, he also sanded off his fingerprints. That's why you never see him pick anything up in a movie. Oh, yeah. Because his, he, his, he his, his fingers don't have any traction. Yeah, the oils. Now you'll see, anytime you see Mark Wahlberg in a movie, he never picks anything up. Yeah. And if he ever commits a crime, like a bank robbery, does he just take out a schlong and wave it around? And... <laughs> And then no one can identify him? <laughs> well, I feel like after the movie, that would be a dead giveaway that it was him. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much. Oh, you're uh, welcome. <laughs> no, I really do mean it, though. Thank you. I really do mean it. You're welcome. All right, great. All and right, let guys, me just say... Yes. Good question, Mitch. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mitchell. <laughs> also, considering, consider renting another movie of mine ever. <laughs> Do, do you have a favorite one you've done? Yeah, uh, yeah? absolutely. Is it uh, so, a little something called Vampire? Oh, <laughs> I know what you're trying to say. You're almost right. Cirque de Freak, the vampire's assistant. <laughs> I play a very charismatic vampire. Immortal, his thirst for blood can never be quenched. He's got a very busy schedule, and he's hired an assistant. <laughs> I thought so. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we we're running out of time. We just have time for one more feature on the show. It's time for a little something that we call "Would You Rather." <laughs> You guys all know how to play. We're running out of time. I don't need to give the instructions. But needless to say, people send me questions to our Twitter, which is comedy, bing bong, would you rather, not uh, my own Twitter. But I'll they can't send them to your own Twitter. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> At a certain point, I'll read the question aloud. Right. <laughs> then what? <laughs> then I'll open the floor for questions. Okay. Did you say running short on time or long on time? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to it. it. Let's get to it. <laughs> let's get to it. You want to jump in there? Here we go. Let's this comes it. to us from R.P. Nickel. R.P. Nickel asks, Would you rather be able to make someone explode by elbowing them between the eyes? <laughs> or... Make them spontaneously combust by cursing them, but it wouldn't happen for a year, and your core body temperature permanently rot increases one degree Fahrenheit each time you do it. Let <laughs> me go over that again. <laughs> First one's simple. Would you, ra would you rather be able to make someone explode by elbowing them between the eyes? Simple. Or... Make them spontaneously combust by cursing them, but it wouldn't happen for a year, and your core body temperature permanently increases one degree Fahrenheit each time you do it. I'm opening the floor for questions. I have a question. Oh, John! <laughs> In the second one, what's the first part again? <laughs> you make them uh, spontaneously combust by cursing, cursing them, them. Like, like a gypsy's curse. But or sorry, Romanian core... curse. 
Thank you. <laughs> but then your core temperature rises one degree, and it won't happen for a year after you do it. The, the, the curse. The temperature, oh, the curse. The, you, the person will not spontaneously. The temperature rising happens, happens right away. Happens immediately, yes. So you got to deal with that, but you may not see a payoff for another year. But I know that it's going to happen. You know this is going to happen. I'm telling you this right now. I know it's going to happen. Within a year, this person will spontaneously combust. Not, I mean, not within a year. One year to the day? To the day, to the second. So the, I can plan it out. Sure. You could, uh, on New Year's Eve. Aww. <laughs> right as the ball drops. Right. <laughs> Times Square. I curse you. <laughs> See you next year. You could if you, you know, wanted to uh, play Havoc up there in the skies. You could figure out when someone's taking a trip a year from now. I could book him a ticket. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Buy him a vacation. Ooh. Do I have to, do they have to hear the curse? Can uh, I do it from home, I guess is what I'm asking. You can do it online. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, also, where does my core temperature start? Great question. Thank See, this you. is the thing. Yeah, it starts at 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh. I gotta lie down. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the other one, Yes. How accurate do I have to be with my elbow? Like, does it have to be dead center between the eyes? Do you find you're not uh, very accurate with your body movements? Really just elbows and knees. <laughs> Everything else? Is Everything just... else I feel like spot on, but um, yeah. like elbows I feel like I'm not calibrated correctly or something. Now if you can get them uh, between the eyes, just kind of like, uh, let me point. Oh, no, I, know. I know where between the eyes. Were you sleeping with your eyes open? <laughs> I was. Did you paint, Sorry. Did you paint eyeballs on your eyelids <laughs> for just such an occasion? <laughs> just like Marky Mark having that big, enormous prosthetic schlong. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yes, I'm going to say schlong one more time during the show. By Do the way, it, and we'll make it appear. <laughs> <laughs> you got to say it into a mirror, like he did. <laughs> you just got to hit him right in this area, right between the eyes. Yeah, on the bridge of the nose. All right, thanks for demonstrating on the face of a person I couldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> Ducky, question? I do have a question about the second scenario. Sure. Is there a guarantee that once I curse this person, we wouldn't be making any amends to become friends again? That is the fear. That's why it, you, know, so you have a one-year to... grace period. Uh, just hopefully I don't become friends with them again. Yeah, exactly. You don't get to reverse it, though. Mm -hmm. So if that ever does happen, that may be your, your you know, greatest uh, terrible time in your life where your best friend all of a sudden spontaneously combusts due to something that you did. Yeah, that could be very tough. Mm. It could be very difficult. I'm surprised that wasn't skiing related. <laughs> no, not everything in my life is skiing. I'm not on the slopes now, so I'm just <laughs> take away from the skiing stuff. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> I have... I have a question. Yes, Mike Mitchell. Uh, on the first one, do you have to use that power? Like, do I have to kill someone? I don't want to kill anyone. Yes, you are forced to kill one person a day. <laughs> okay. Keep talking. <laughs> but it can never be a theater usher. Stop talking. <laughs> it, and uh, can I ask the same question with the second scenario? Do sure. I, do I have? Do you have to curse? Anyone? Do you have to kill people? No, you do not have to, as a matter of fact. You probably shouldn't because your body temperature is so high. <laughs> can you... What? Can you curse animals? And if you can, does that cause your body temperature to rise or does it remain the same? You can curse any animal. Hooray! Down to an, down to an ant. Oh, oh, boy! <laughs> and it does not raise your body temperature. Oh, Those are freebies. This is a dream come true. <laughs> is, there, is there anyone... Fun times at the zoo. Can you curse anyone to bring your body temperature down, to bring it a, a degree down? That something? is a great question. No, you cannot curse anyone to bring your body temperature down. You uh, can get people off of death row. If you work uh, tirelessly with a foundation to get people off of death row, every person that you get off death row, it goes down one but degree. But like through the system, you mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then all you get out of is one, it's one, degree. one degree? Yeah. And they're, man, usually, man. they're usually guilty. Oh. oh, my God. Why won't I... Do I ever try to get innocent people off of death row? Oh, no, no. That would be against the rules. In the elbow one, yep. um, people explode. 
Sure. No, I mean, that's what you, that's what you said, right? No, oh, I thought you meant other people. No, no, no. I, I can because, cause... yeah, other people are exploding all the time. Wait, wait, wait. You said I could cause people to explode. No, you do. I just, as other people are also exploding. Hey, man, exploding. let me finish my thought. What if I finish my thought? We're at a Mexican standoff that's right now. That's right. Finish them at the same time. Thank you. King Solomon what? couldn't have done better. <laughs> do Other people are exploding constantly in around the you. Eyes to explode Not due to you. It's they ex- you explode them, right? That is why you're able to get away with it. I was mistaken. <laughs> so you, you use your elbow, hit people between the eyes, that person explodes? That person explodes, yes. And what? Other people explode around you? Yeah, other, the, this is a world and a universe where people are constantly, spontaneously combusting and exploding. Am I really doing anything then? I feel like... <laughs> you know what I mean? You're helping them along a uh, little bit. I feel like it's when you give a little kid a fake steering wheel in a car. <laughs> it seems like in that scenario you're only adding wear and tear to your elbows. <laughs> Good catch, Dougie. Your, your, el- <laughs> your elbows are incredibly chafed. This is horrible. Um, when they explode, is there any damage to me? Is there any shrapnel? Fallout! <laughs> Collateral damage. Are those all movies you were in? Yep. <laughs> and cut out of. Yeah, I mean, someone's exploding right when you tap them. Uh, you, you know, you're going to get some, some skull. Uh, okay. Strap- yes. okay, so people are exploding all the time yeah. anyway. Sure. That's why everyone wears complete body armor. Right, oh, no, of course. And so, <laughs> if I uh, hit someone between the eyes with my elbow, they explode causing damage to me. Right? Yes, I how, mean, if how, it gets through your armor. How often am I doing this? You're doing this every hour on the hour. Okay. <laughs> why am I doing this? For the love of the game. <laughs> I get enjoyment out of this? You enjoy it, yeah. Does I like it? You what? I like it. You love it. You more than like it. You, you love it. So you're very fulfilled. At 102 degrees, is that like, is it, warm, is it like how you would feel at 102 degrees in this reality? Would it be like you have the flu or something? No, uh, actually your body temperature goes all the way up to 240 before, uh, oh. yeah. Before so very... like you feel like you have a fever? Yeah. So you're freezing cold? Yeah, you're freezing cold all the time. So you're doing it as much as you can. <laughs> Cursing people left and right. Yep. I have a question about yes, the second uh, scenario. All right, Ducky. Shooting my body temperature, I kill, whatever, over 140 people, was it? Sure. 240. If, it goes, if my body temperature goes over 240 degrees, and I keep killing people, I get hotter and hotter, is anyone offended if I ski in the nude? <laughs> I feel as if Scott the snow and the breeze upon my nude body would only cool me down. I think we're all offended by you skiing in the nude. Agree to disagree. Uh, I've closed the floor for questions! Why didn't you warn anyone? Oh, sorry. All right, we're going to vote. Mitch, Mike Mitchell, how do you vote? Uh, I, I'm going to go with the scenario where you curse someone because I just wouldn't curse anyone. I would live an uncomfortable life like I do now, kind of. <laughs> where you're just freezing cold your entire life? <laughs> Very cold, constantly, yes. What kind of life is that? I don't know. I like it cooler, so it doesn't bug me too You wouldn't kill anyone if, if you had the chance? No, I don't know. What? I really <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> I don't think I could do it. I... Do you think? And this is a serious question. Do you think, even though you don't want to do it, uh, do you think you will kill someone before the end, the end of your life? Maybe. How do you think it'll happen? Probably wrestling or something. Wrestling? <laughs> like goofing around and then you accidentally snap someone's neck. Goofing around, I snap someone's <laughs> neck. Like a real, <laughs> real of mice and men style. <laughs> <laughs> All George, right, Ducky. Funny George. How do you like to vote? I'm going to vote for the chafed elbow. The chafed elbow, really? Indeed. Why is that? Because... Why is that the detail that's uppermost in your mind? Yeah. Of that scenario. It came out late, but it's stuck in your mind. <laughs> no, I had that thought right away. Yeah. I, because I would never want to offend anyone with my nude body. You made me feel bad about it. And I don't ever want to do that. I'm sorry, folks. 
That's the response I was looking for. Thank you very much. All right, great. John C. Riley, how do you vote? You know, voting is... It's a oh, privilege. It's a right and a privilege, yeah. <laughs> and I take it seriously. And I wish I could talk this over with my wife and kids. And your pastor? Man. <laughs> I don't know what that guy's going to say. <laughs> I guess I like the idea of, you know, cursing people. It's very magical. It puts me in mind of Search of Freak, the vampire's assistant. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you said, like, when I'm elbowing those people, and even though I'm getting hurt through my body armor, you said I love it. It's like, if you're happy in work, you're happy in life. So I gotta go with that. Happy wife, happy life. That's right. Your wife is very unhappy in this situation. <laughs> she ought to start elbowing with people and exploding them like I do. I love it. Wow. All right. Well, let me tally up the points. Did Mitch uh, vote? What? Mitch voted. I voted. Right? I, you voted, voted first. Yeah, I, did. I voted second. No, you were first. Oh, I was first. Yeah. <laughs> It's been a long day. I know. Really, it's five in the afternoon. <laughs> There's a lot more to come, my friend. I hate to be the first person to break it to you. <laughs> You're like a little bear who wants to hibernate. <laughs> Please get me in my cave. Hey, do you notice that those bears on the Charmin commercial? Like, their lives are changing. Like... When they first started, they were bears in the woods that used toilet paper. That was weird, okay. Now they have a house and they wear clothes. I mean, when you start with toilet paper. What? I don't know where this is headed and what it means for the human race. They just want more modern conveniences. iPhones, flying cars. <laughs> All right, guys, let's tally up the points. John, your tail has touched me. You are a winner. Whoa! Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. You guys are awesome. And you are granted this power henceforth. What? I have the power to curse people? No, you're breaking people's... <laughs> oh, that's the thing I love. That's right. <laughs> I'm hungry. But if you want to try cursing someone, you can. All right, uh, I curse you. Oh, wow, Ducky. Oh, sound guy. Just... Oh, wow. He just narrowly dodged. Sorry, Stu. Sorry, bro. See you in a year. <laughs> really? You're going to be here for it? Why not? Hey, let's agree that we'll all be back here one year from yeah, today. Yeah, why don't we? Why don't we? It's a date. We'll watch the sound guy explode. Yeah. <laughs> Forgive me, spontaneous look above. Well, guys, we got to wrap this show up, um, and uh, it's been great. Thank you so much, Boston, for having us. Thanks for coming out here in the middle of the afternoon. We've had a lot of fun. We're glad we could provide you a different backdrop against which to drink your beer. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you Thank show. Everybody. Thanks to Ducky Pell, Mike Mitchell, John C. Riley.